Good morning and or evening, depending upon time zone. Ladies, gentlemen, and all those in between and beyond that binary of the internet, welcome back to the Young Lights Roleplay. More specifically, welcome one last time to the tales of the Gilded Coasts here and against the light, our Kingdoms and Warfare story. I am your host, Young Foxy, Philly's finest. But much more importantly than me, I have gathered around me the High Council of House Verdans, ready to take to the field of war and put to a stop the Everlight Church. So please, in the order that I call you out, tell everybody who you are, where you can be found on the internet, and who you will be taking to the field with one last time. Let's start with Chaus. Wow, okay, wow. Um, hello everyone, I'm Chaus. Uh, I'll be playing uh, Rio Branshaw, our lovely crime gremlin rogue. Um, uh, I will be taking to the field uh, Wait, are we going over the like the units we're taking? No, that was no, that was that was that was it. Just no. so, so you're playing, you got it. Thanks, boss. Sorry, you did great. Okay, cool. Fantastic. <laughs> Moving right past the master of espionage over to the ranger general Tate. Take it away. Hello, Twitch. My name is Tate Washburn. I will be playing Erdre, the elfin ranger monk that is just just excited to finally do his uh, goddamn job. That's what he does. The Ranger General will, will general the Rangers and other other folks as well, actually, believe it or not. That's the crazy thing. Moving on to past the Ranger General over to the House Historian. Take it away, Meg. Hello, everybody. I am Meg Mysteria, and tonight, for the last time, I get to bring Leah Evermore, our complicated, for lack of a better term, <laughs> House Historian. And we'll see what happens when you take a strategist to the field. And let me say, Leah, you are looking ghoulish this evening. I mean that respectively, of course. Uh, moving right on along, as there's only one last person left to introduce, but anything but the least person here. Taking it past the House Historian over to the High Emissary. Please, Legendary Vermin, say hi to the people. Hey, everybody. I'm Vermin, or Legendary Vermin. You can find me on all the places on the internet that matter. We'll talk about what those are later as Legendary Vermin. Tonight, I am playing Fane Hemlock, anchorite to Nyx, the Layfinder, the Venomistress. She's called Night Thunder, the Unburnt, the Twilight Shrike, and the Seamstress Eye. She's here to fuck you up uh, and bring down the thunder, quite literally. Quite literally. You'll see exactly how that happens in just a bit if you want your special one. Friends, I'm gonna be just honest with y'all uh, before we get into it. A couple things. One, if those of you aren't aware, this is our first time using the Kingdoms of Warfare system and more specifically our first time using the battle part of the system. So if we're a bit clunky with it and messy with it on any side, please be nice to us, we're trying our best. Secondly, beyond that, uh, just wanna say, I am so excited for this session. Uh, we have been working through this campaign for a long time, building up a lot of great and incredibly meaningful interactions that I cannot wait to see resolved. So, as I give a quick recap, set the scene. We'll go ahead and move our players right in. Give me just a moment. <clears throat> The day finds us somewhere around early morning. The march towards the coast has been quiet. Forces gathered and individuals assembled. After long periods of, well, first marching, then feasting, then resting, bits of time to rally the troops, discuss battle plans and handle things, you have found yourself here on this day. However you awoke is up to you. Whether you slept well last night is up to you. All of you, however, did approach this night and this morning knowing one simple truth. It will be today. The Everlight Church has already made landfall 
Your plans are already set in motion. You are preparing to meet them on the field of battle. We'll check in with some reports that you might have just before the battle starts real soon. But uh, before I do that, please go ahead and describe one. How was your character's night? How well did you sleep? How well did you rest? What did you think about? Two, where are you this morning? Are you near the others gathered around the tent in the command tent with Naori discussing plans for the day with the troops drinking yourself stupid? Who knows? Tell me where you are and uh, what you got going on. And as I am so very keen to say, darlings, the scene is yours. So if we have no one to start us off, I guess I will kind of note first. Ball on the sword, Lydia. Go for it. Lydia, never having really been one to sleep much or need it, as we're finding out, uh, has spent the evening within the command tent. She'd been there since the tent went up, going over the map, over what units and taking information as it's brought in um just be about creating some tactics and plans and putting these in place uh to contest the church once they make landfall mm. and that is likely where she is found going into the early morning absolutely i think you'll find <clears throat> along the large command table it's actually less of a table and more just a uh, a large pit that uh, the troops have dumped a large helping of sand and other, you know, sort of like fine, coarse uh, dirt into, enabling uh, tacticians like yourself and Naudi and other other generals and sub commanders to just draw out a general battle map of the area and the surrounding places. You have small indi uh, sort of symbols that indicate each of your troops and your units where you might place them, how they're marching, their readiness levels. There are other attendants around you. Some are doing various things like checking in on troop registers preparing to move carts of grain or organizing patrols. Others are moving to hand you tea or snacks or bringing you paperwork or reports. Just generally, like, very quickly just moving in, handing you something. Thank you very much, High Story, High Story, and, and moving on. Not letting you, not keeping you very bothered for too long, but definitely letting, you know, helping you out where they can. Totally noted. Hmm. And as we kind of get further in the day, she actually does... Go and speak with the units that have come under her command, but we can revisit that at a later point. We sure will. Where's anybody else at right now? Yeah. Uh, I think Airdre takes advantage of the fact he only needs like four hours of sleep, and even then he's meditating to like... I wish. He, right? He's still like a little conscious of everything, so he probably sits himself at what he thinks is the most tactical place for like someone to sneak into camp. Which could be totally just b a bizarre location. Like, I might be behind some tent. And he kneeled there for four hours to sleep. And every other moment he's had has been dealing with doing some last-minute drills, inspecting equipment of just everybody's units. Mm. Uh, even the ones that are, like, way more professional and he shouldn't be that worried about. I think he leaves the uh, Wyvern Riders to Lydia. But uh, the Lancers and, like, the Elf unit that he has... Or, not Lydia, excuse me. To fame. Sorry. We were talking we'll, about we'll who talk got about what, what, and I got confused. What the writers are up to. Don't you worry. Yeah, but, but yeah, like, both the elves' units and the lancers that are definitely super professional and don't need it, he still, like, inspected each of their equipment sets once. Mostly he's spending time with the levies, though, and, like, making sure they don't screw up because they are absolute brand new soldiers, and he's, like, on top of that the Absolutely. whole time. And he's probably, like, drill sergeanting them. Mm -hmm. Erdre, you even notice as you are checking on some of the more experienced units who are not, they have no problem keeping themselves drilled. Plenty of them have fought before. They know that commanders, some of them even fought with you for plenty of years now. So they're well aware mm -hmm. of how much you like to drill your, uh, you know, your, uh, your, your troops and keep them well focused. Uh, as you're like leaving them and coming back towards the levy, you find at least a couple groups of them where are just like kind of fucking around, you know, messing around with the spear points a bit, maybe having a drink, placing bets, goofing off, even somewhere kind of gambling, maybe even like offering a few prayers. As you get close, they just right back into shape and start like you know doing drill, you know drills mm -hmm. and training again. But they're really clearly staring off at you to make sure that you see them doing the training, mm -hmm. so that they can wait till you walk away so they can stop. 
I, okay. I, I think at this point, especially if this is like the day of, he uh, actually will walk like next to the closest one and like just gently hand on shoulder. It's like, now is not the time for drills. The prayers were appropriate though, if it brings you peace. Uh, they kind of give a nod. The person you get their hand on is actually, hold on, let's go a quick roll. It's actually one of the younger levies. They're a younger, it's so hard for you to guess human ages, honestly, but they definitely couldn't have been anything but recently out of adolescence, if they're even out of it, honestly. You're not super sure. Very, very younger, uh, younger person who looks up at you with, looks like almost a slight bit of awe, almost, like they're talking to a living statue or something. Uh, but as you offer them, you know, that those words of, of condolence, they just kind of meekly nod and then turn back to their friends and kind of you see them with another friend of theirs clasp hands together and begin to kind of slowly and silently offer a prayer to whatever deities it may be that they worship or call upon in these times. Yeah. As soon as that's done, Airdre is going to be like, and now get your gear in shape. Polish this. Oh, yeah. that, like, right back at it. Oh, it's yeah, not drills now, though. It's like, around. we're going to march. Mm hmm. Yeah, the rest we're of the march immediately right back ready. to it. You know, start polishing shields and wiping off spear points. Some cities are marching in place for no fucking reason. You'd have no idea what they're what they're up to, honestly. But they're getting it done. It's getting done. <laughs> Go to somebody else. We got two left. Uh, I have an idea for what Rio would be doing. Um, kind of just in the middle of the day, um, while Lydia's still in like the um, in the tent, he would kind of just like appear as he does um, beside Lydia and uh, be like, I understand you and Amon have some history and that does not make my faith wane. However, I do have a question and he will hold up a knife uh, uh, by the blade. So kind of just like offering the, the, the actual knife to Lydia. Would you be the one would you, I'm sorry, no. Uh, would you like to be the one to kill him? If it were at all feasible, I would like to avoid death this day at all. But in order to address the thing residing within him that is latched onto him. Then I will have to spill his blood. Now, I will say that in that regard, I would appreciate being the one to deal that blow, but I am not particularly selfish. Whoever is capable of taking his life should do so. Very well. Um, you know, kind of, uh, kind of, uh, you know, put the knife back. Um, you know, kind of, uh, he'll take a take a look at the uh, at like the the formations of like the fortifications and stuff, and he'll kind of look and be like, "Alrighty, that's my battle plan." Um, and he'll uh, kind of walk out the tent and see you, Lydia. Probably, um, I don't know, just go back to walking around the tents and, uh, um, you know, keeping his mind off things. You'll find a few patrols passing, all of them, each one, you know, their commanding officer stops and offers you a quick nod or, you know, a, a, a quick, my lord, you know, as, as they pass by with you know, nothing else. But they see you're kind of in your own head, you know, keeping to yourself, so they don't bother you with anything more than that. Minor reports here and there from scouts keeping track of the movements or anything like that, but nothing too serious to keep your eyes on other than that. Uh, anything important to you, we can come back to. It leaves us with just one person. 
our dear high emissary. What you doing, Lydia? So not, now I'm doing it. Fuck. <laughs> Go for it, Faith. Uh, so, quick question: How indisposed is Nauri uh, the night before? I'm gonna say the night before she actually she's busy a little bit past her usual bedtime, but not too much longer. She doesn't okay. need a beauty rest. And is she riding into battle in any capacity? Oh, fun bit of, 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 of history here, actually. Um, it was not uncommon for uh, lords and nobles, if they were not a part of the direct battle march, uh, to often sort of sit off towards the side with other command staff to observe and take in the battle. Uh, this is most commonly because it was very, very common that if you, know, if you lost, you were taken prisoner and or executed. And so kind of just to expedite that whole process and also to keep eye on, on the troops. Also... And especially in this case, having you know the matriarch of the house them herself around for the around at the at the eve of battle will probably boost you know the morale of the troops. She herself will likely not sit on the front line, but will definitely be not too far from the field from the fields of war itself. Okay, but she's not going into battle. No. Okay. Uh, so this is uh, potentially something you're a little familiar with, Foxy. Hey. Um, but there, there is the night before. We see Fane and uh, other like members uh, of her troops, and I know I have a unit of Westland levies, but they are it's uh, it's people that uh, Fane like gathered together uh, mm -hmm. alongside uh, Airdre and all that, um, and so all of their units, uh, those three units, are basically having a huge celebration the night before, um, and people are becoming. Uh, Played bonded. Um, so there is uh, basically like uh, battle marriages happening the night before. Mm -hmm. uh, people um, exchanging uh, blood, um, like swearing vows to each other, and then holding on to a, like a bunch of small uh, knives from that ceremony that they wear around their belts. Um, going into battle, Fane's. Uh, uh, regalia includes uh, no less than 16 knives um, and she asks Nauri to like come and join them for um, this ceremony uh, I say you're familiar with it Foxy because this is absolutely ripped from the fucking Tao in 40k yeah nah I'm here for it no it's definitely there's it's not so much at the onset of the ceremonies, you're definitely already fully into it when they're, eventually you find a sort of slight muted hush comes over the, you know, very raucous crowd as, you know, flanked by two guards in full armor, uh, Naughty strides her way confidently into the ceremony and there's a brief moment of pause as everyone kind of gives her her due reverence, but it's not long after as she, you know, looks around at all, at all those gathered. Seems as if she wants to offer a speech of some kind, but instead simply places her hand out to you, indicating she'd like one of your knives, and smiles. Hell yeah. Uh, she gets it. Um, yeah. The knife for her is... Uh, they they have, like, all these ribbons and stuff, um, and they rewrap the handle once they are made. So uh, they, they put their hands around the blade, they cut, um, and then uh, the two blades, I should say. Uh, and then each of the hilts is wrapped in the blue and gray and gold of House Verdans. Mm -hmm. um, and it is tucked a 17th blade uh, into uh, Fane's belt. Mm -hmm. uh, she lifts her hand up proudly. And as the blood drips down, all the, 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 the gathered orcs and other folk who are par a part of the ceremony, in fact... You even notice as you've been having this, some of the other troops who you didn't even summon have just kind of just like wandered their way in. Some just kind of like, what the hell's going on? Others very, very loving what's happening here. And all of them, everyone goes up in a raucous cheer. She lifts her hand high and everyone clearly intending that like, our battle goddess is going into the war with us. We can't lose. Yeah. Battle goddess. You know. Uh, Fane emerges from Nauri's tent uh, early in the morning uh, so as to make a respectable entrance to the command tent from a different direction. Uh, there's definitely still maybe an attendant or two who does quip you an eyebrow as you uh, walk in. Y'all weren't exactly quiet last night, unfortunately. Um, but 
they respect you enough to not say anything about it. Uh, shortly after you f walk into the command tent, uh, Naori joins from another, another angle. And I'll say not too long after, as is customary for the eve before a battle, the rest of the High Council gathers together here as well. Lydia, you were probably already in there, obviously, as you were there the whole night. Uh, but, you know, you were given the call, Rio and Airdre, at some point when you had time to gather in the command tent to discuss the final battle plan. And we'll put ourselves sort of finally in that scene as, for one last time before the eve of battle, the High Council gathers. Take us there, friends. I think now would be the moment, uh, maybe even just before people meet, that Airdre would sort of, I guess, like, get Rio's attention, not really take him aside. I think they're more equals at this point. But that seems like it'd be inappropriate. But he would mm -hmm. sort of get his attention, and he'd say, uh, I have met with our elf contingent, the, or the archers that I've assembled. Uh, they're led by one Elias. I trust them, but I believe you should be in charge of them, not me. Okay. Uh, is there any particular reason you feel such? Uh, he'd make like sort of a sly look behind him where you can see some of the levies like getting their stuff together. It's like, I have some of our inexperienced soldiers to look after. I don't have time to deal with the ones that know what they're doing. And, well, you have a good eye. Thank you. I shall take good care of them. Just don't get them killed. Put a lot of training into them. Of course. So, gonna gesture to the table. Any surprises? Last second reports? Now to yourself, kind of pipes up. I'm sorry, unless wait, you have anything. Go ahead. Wait, I uh -huh. have a question because I've been thinking about this. And I have an answer, uh, hopefully. What, what does everybody's battle dress look like? Thank you! Someone asked the fucking question! I was going to later, but you got it. Because <laughs> we'd be uh, wearing it already. Yeah, definitely. Please, yeah. please, yeah. please describe your character's battle dress. I'd love to have that described. Uh, Airdre has gotten his second best, like, official military coat. And he's cleaned it up. It's only his second best because you can tell he's had to, like, mend it once or twice. And it doesn't really look much different than what he normally wears, but it's over, like, his white shirt. And the only difference is he has these uh, bright green bracers that look like they're made out of a giant leaf that uh, Rio got him. Or I guess the queen let him take. Yeah. He also, I think, has his sword uh, on his side instead of his back. The back is for, like, stealthy, I'm doing rangery stuff. Where on your hip is generally, like, just an easier to get to more, like, I am ready to fight someone position for it. Uh, Lydia, Rio, battle dress. Okay. All right, I can go next. Um, go. Rio is um, a bit different uh, than how you would have normally seen him. Uh, typically, uh, he would have had like his uh, his working clothes, as he would call them, on uh, as a uh, as like a dark black, almost blood red. Um, like trench coat. Uh, however, with his new addition of the cloak of Elvenkind, he has uh, kind of seamed it himself into more of like a battle vest that goes down uh, not too far down past the hips, but just, you know, like straps, uh, pockets, all like a bunch of knives, um, you know, storage and stuff like that. And then on top of that, the. Um, the, the cloak of elven kind with uh, with some more cargoy pants uh, and the the boots of elven kind. Mm. Rio, you definitely feel power in those in in those in that elven war gear. You sense it hasn't 
properly, perfectly attuned to you in the way it would a, like a standard elven soldier, but it definitely still empowers you in some ways. Yeah, well, he'll be like, well, I mean, that's understandable. Uh, and like, talking to himself, he's just like, I am half elf, so, you know. All right. And that just lets, uh, what leaves us with, uh, I guess, Faith, you've already kind of gone there, so you can feel free to go into more stuff if you'd like. Lydia also has Lydia. gone. Yes, I meant those two, yeah, those two. Yeah. Uh, so... Go ahead. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Marco? <laughs> so, um, as far as what Lydia's wearing for battle garb, it's very much a long blue gown that has a chest piece akin to almost like scale mail over the chest and the shoulders as well as the arm guards and then she wears uh, a similar dressing on her legs underneath the gown it's kind of split uh, into three pieces, so there's plenty of room for movement. Mm. Um, but a... <laughs> sorry, I saw that. Sorry, but... gave myself. I'm a good boy, I'm sorry. <laughs> but, um, across the gown and the armor, there are almost like constellations, uh, stars speckled across it. I repeat. And a... <laughs> Uh, although she has given her usual crystal necklace to Naori, since she is keeping away from the front line, mm -hmm. um, a similar color jewel sits inlaid in her chest piece about right over her, where her heart will be. Yeah. They, uh, a circlet, just a metal circlet around her. Forehead. Yes! Yes! <laughs> Love me a good circlet! Sorry. I'm just I'm fanboy notably, right now. Don't mind me. Notably, she does have knives strapped to the upper each upper thigh, but other than that, she doesn't carry any weapons. Why are y'all dressed like anime characters? I love this shit. <laughs> because uh, we're fucking anime characters. You know what? This is how Adrian dresses at all times. <laughs> Adrian has barely dressed up at all. <laughs> I got more knives than belts. I love it. Give me I more have of it. More knives I than I have do belts. All belts. Like I don't. Know. <laughs> <laughs> I guess then like Andre probably has a belt across his chest that has like all his darts instead of like hidden in his jacket. Might be the only difference now that I think about it. If we're well, mentioning belts. And fair knives. enough. <laughs> fair enough then. Keep the belt knife train going, Fane. What you got for me? So, uh. If, if everyone else uh, looks like an anime character, Fane probably looks a little more like a, um, you know, an early aughts MMO character. Yeah. Uh, so her... Kate. Yeah. What? Doesn't matter. She is wearing uh, kind of... Um, it looks uh, like metal but it's much much lighter um it's a uh, purplish armor that's done up in a bramble motif um and she's wearing uh, a helmet uh in sort of the same vein um notably uh since she does look like an mmo character her armor covers the boobs but leaves like a hole uh dead center she's got it's like a korean a mmo got it okay yeah uh or Big just fan. any MMO before Honestly, yeah, yeah. 2010. Honestly, yeah. Uh, Move window. But yeah, her her uh, array of knives is around her, uh, like, uh, her waist and down her leg. Um, normally, you can fit only so many there, so uh, eventually, you get leg straps. Um, I'm going to be leg strapped by Fanny, if you know what I mean. Hey! <laughs> Importantly, <laughs> like, there are spikes on her armor, um, and, be. uh, especially on the knees and on the shoulders, and it looks like they have punched through metal a few times. Damn straight. Uh, 
So, is there anything else I wanted to do? Oh, she also, around her, uh, like, kind of hanging off of her, dangling a little bit, is uh, a sensor that is currently not got any incense in it, uh, but will as soon as she flies in the ground. Yeah, it's, okay. It's covered in, in motifs that are related to Nyx. Okay, getting this fucking Sorotas cosplay going with the sensor. I, I fuck with it. Yeah, okay, okay, all right, okay, 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 all right, okay, all right, okay. Fuck, you all look so fucking cool. You. you all look really cool right now. I'm sorry. I wanna, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a lot of fangirling for me today, so just be prepared for that, okay? All right, as we move past this. <clears throat> so, you all again gathered here. Uh, if you'd like, you can take a moment to kind of like discuss maybe like battle plans, or if you want, we can have that. Actually, here's how it's going to work. So, my players are already fully aware of how the battle system works for Kingdoms of Warfare, at least the basic ideas. For our chat, though, what happens is initiative determines not only how initiative will work in combat, but also who will deploy first for the actual battle here. As I begin to lower some of the sounds and let everything know. So, here's how this goes, okay? We are all going to roll initiative, which includes all of you guys and also the generals of the, of the Everlight Church. They will all roll initiative. I will put that on the tracker. Starting from the bottom to the top. Each one, everyone will deploy all their units. You reach a command of four units. They are a command of a number of units themselves. Make sense? So, to scene set. As you all gather around the war table, uh, the scouts begin to report in on the locations of the Everlight Church, informing you where, the, where their landing zones are. They do inform you that the, landings, the uh, landing zones that they were landing were being harassed by, well, flaming explosive barrels being thrown at Mach 2 by giants. Uh, which definitely inflicted heavy casualties and definitely damaged the fleet. They also informed you of something else as we move into a very quick flashback scene. <clears throat> we move ourselves to the coasts, not too far from Corsa Crest. The Everlight Church is preparing to make its landing, moving its way down towards or its landing. Troops are dispatching themselves readily. There was no real contest as far as a fleet went. So they simply moved their battle fleet back towards a line. In fact, and after this was, de that was, this was declared that there was no effective threat, they made kind of an interesting choice. Talv decided to call in the battle fleet and have them move closer to the landing zones to resupply since there was no actual naval threat. And it's as they do so that something happens. At first distant and not too easy to tell and then distinct splashes start popping up all around the ships iman looks back and forth confused as to what the hell could be happening before a runner finally makes his way up just as one of those ships goes up in flames and attacks her from the waves pirates but they're armed like like i've never seen these things before as over the coasts and waves comes a massive fleet of ships helmed by a, ma a huge dreadnought, easily twice the size of any ship even the Crusaders could have brought. Its front split open and a huge eagle-headed siege, siege cannon sticking out of the front of it. Every time it fires, the siege round skims along the, along the, the waterline, sending waves splashing up on either side like a roaring creature spitting out blasts of searing hot water almost split ships in two. It is not long before Amon realizes his fleet does not have a way, or his, his troops do not have a way home. It's win or die. And with that, we cut ourselves back over to here. Focusing in on the battle scene itself, uh, this might be a great time for our stream engine to go ahead and move us over to our combat camera so our chat can get a look at our, look at our, uh, you know, our, 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 our map here. We are on the battle map. Your fortifications are in place. You have four ranks. Reserve, uh, Vanguard, Sensor, and Rear. Obviously, you know what they represent. You know how they can be placed. As a reminder, infantry can be placed wherever you'd like them to. Uh, uh, artillery units, so that's your, your, cal your archers and things like that, must be placed in the center rank by default. And cavalry and aerial units do not go on the grid. They go elsewhere off on the side here. So just place them when it's your turn to place them. Don't worry about it. Please, everyone, as we prepare to work out the battle plans here, I'm going to ask you all to roll me some initiative. You don't have, a, have a characters to track, 
So I'm gonna gonna go ahead and just uh here. I need to very quickly just move your tokens over. Give me a minute. I can put them on the GM layer. It shouldn't shouldn't be that hard. Hold up, hold tight. And you can just let me know what you what y'all got for uh for numbers, and I'll uh, I'll I'll put them in. Stand by. I'm sorry, this is taking so long. Uh, I would like to use a maneuver, so you know, so I can add some bullshit to this roll. That's totally fine. You can go ahead and do exactly that. Let me also grab y'all tokens so I can put y'all initiative on the thing, and then we'll get some music going. Get ourselves really in the mood, huh? Because honestly, it's a little quiet over here, friends, and I'm going to think we can fix that, huh? So let me take a moment to swap some things around here uh, to the GM layer. Boom. There you guys all are. Perfection. All right. Let's get ourselves some music. Guard patrols back on. Birds back on. Working town back on. And how about a little throwback for some music, friends? So, you know, in case, you, in case, you know, in case, 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 case the mood wasn't set properly, you know? As we bring ourselves in, Tell me numbers. I got a 20. All right. That's a 20 for Airdre. An 18. Uh, add turn. Add turn. Add turn. Add turn. And then you four. Can I add turn for all four of you at one time? That'd be super fucking cool if I could. I don't know if I can, though. I, I can. Hell yeah. Airdre, 20. Fane, 18. Lydia. Uh, 10. I will also note that in the turn order, when it comes up for us, it doesn't show us. I, that yeah, sucks. The, I can fix that. Yeah, Don't worry. worry. I'll fix you that. You could put Don't our tokens worry. just to the side of the map. Yeah, and, I got you. Hold uh, tight. As long as they're yeah. on that. I'm about to do that right now. Hold tight. Here, let me. Uh, layer. Token layer. There you go. There They're all in are. there. Bada boom. There you go. All right. Uh, now I gotta reset it again. 20, 18, 10 from Lydia, Rio. 11. 11. That's not 110, 11. And now it's my turn. <laughs> 110 now, initiative. Be, be against that. <laughs> Fast as fuck boy. All right, that's a 12, sorry, 13 from Traka. A seven from Morhem. A nine from, sorry, nope, my fault. That's a 14 from Tolf. And a, oof. A nine for Amon. Let's get it in descending order. So from the bottom, up first is Morahem, Bishop of the Flame, who will place his units. So he will place one here. Your troops begin reporting in that they have noticed a front line of uh, they have noticed a front line of Everlight infantry gathering up, and they already can see at least one unit of Everlight Crusader uh, Crusader air flying cavalry doing air support runs and and, and and scouting around. We move up next to Iman himself. They let you know that behind that group of uh, that behind that group of, of infantry also comes a gathering of the elite Everlight uh, phalanx who are a bit more tough in their infantry department, as well as, well, even more spotted Everlight Crusaders and a phalanx or two of Dwarhold soldiers. Up next, Lydia, place your units. I was sitting over here going, oh, normal initiative, highest to lowest. I've got nope. minutes, a minute to think about it. No, it's nope. the other way around. It's uh, backwards. Hold on. <laughs> backwards. Um, so... Two of them, you don't need to worry about, because you've got two sets of cavalry, right? Yeah, so yeah, your cavalry, I, I'll even put them for you. They just, they just by default automatically go over here onto the cavalry spot. So just your two uh, uh, crossbows you have control of. Which and have to go center, center right. Center. Yeah, they have to go center right. Yeah, they do have to go center right. So mm -hmm. I could put them on the towers, couldn't I? You sure could. Yeah. And 
will place them on the towers and as a bonus for all of my units, thanks to that wonderful the tower to the back. wonderful yeah. sorceress training. Uh all of my units have invisibility. They sure so do. They are all hidden. Yep. Going into this. Um Which means they cannot be targeted on the first round and they are yeah, they, they cannot be targeted. I'm pretty sure, right? Uh, I'll look it up again. Uh they there's a disadvantage on them to begin with, mm -hmm. um, and they are hidden until they it inflicts one or more casualty on another unit. Yep. All right. Uh, before kind of giving them their orders and setting them out, uh, Leah gathers her units and says, I apologize for not being the most involved commander i'm not nearly as hands-on as my compatriots but i know all of you know what you are doing i'm putting my faith in you as you are putting your, fa your faith in me and i will do what i can to make sure that you will all return home And that we will assign. Uh, one of my units gets a wand of fire. Or sure do. And we'll give that to. One of the knights. Oh, uh, we'll just say these guys. Doesn't matter too much. Let me give them a little symbol. Boom, they've got that symbol, so I indicate they have the Wand of Fire. Excellent. Awesome. Uh, the last sign you get as you cast your invisibility spell over your troops is all of them, as one, offering you a crisp, clean battle salute as they fade from sight. We move on to our next person. That brings us to Rio. Place your units. Alrighty, I don't think I can move much. You can't. Just tell me where you want to, where you want to put them at. Oh, um... Let's see. So the uh, the artillery can't be in anything further than center. center. It can only be center, yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, the Westland spears will be uh, actually the Westland spears can be on walls, correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So he'll have the um, the Westland spears be. Also, you can move them now. Uh, you should be able, you should be able, to, able oh, to move your guys now. Oh, I can't. Cool. I'm You're... doing that for the rest of you guys now, so oh. stand by. Yeah, and then layering is kind of funky. Uh, here, let me uh, put them in the top for you. Hold up. Stand by. Uh, layer to front to front. Cool. There you go. Yo, thank you kindly. Yep. Sorry, my fault. You're good. There you go. I got you. You putting them on oh. this wall here or not on the wall at all? Um... Yeah, wall. he'll put them both on the walls, you got uh, it. and then the uh, the pillfall watchers will be here uh, and here. Uh, so what they're gonna do next is just to move up to these two walls. Um, and when they can, don't worry about that. That's on their turn. Yeah, later. when they can. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, so I that should be that. Okay. Um. Moves us up to Ah, Draka goes next actually. Look at that. Give me just one second to give this unit to Meg, and then I'll keep moving there. Awesome. So, Draka goes next. You report the following is happening. Uh you know you get more reports of Everlight infantry approaching and gathering on the line. You also get reports that brought along with them are a couple of Dwarhold cannoneers. And they've brought their equipment. Uh-oh. That might be a bit of an oof. Uh, an oof indeed. Uh, that moves us up to uh, tall. So the last reports you get are that, uh, hmm. You guys got reports that on the original March, so Rio, your reports you got when they were headed towards uh, towards Riza Isle included at least three uh, battalions of shield sisters, along with several groupings of uh, pale fall archers. You guys get reports of archers that are definitely in among the unit and definitely seen Palefall aligned. No shield sisters, though. 
you do notice that you have some more West than that. Some, some, more, some more Evelyn Crusaders, though. Yeah. And uh, that's their entire army. As we now move up to Lydia, who will then be followed by Airdre. Guys, we'll lace your... Sorry, I did it a fuck... Fame. Do the thing. All right. Uh, do... I don't have control yet. I don't. I meant to do that. That's that's on me. Stand by. I'm doing that right now. All right, you got that one levy, and you got the lancers. The levy is the important one because it's the only one I'm going to place. That's true. Well, you got it, so you can go ahead and place that levy. Yeah. So uh, the levy is going to go right yonder. Uh, <laughs> Baiting these uh, infantrymen to uh, roll up. All right. Uh, and I guess that last leaves us with Android. Place your levies. Yeah. Uh, I definitely want a levy each on these. I don't think I have control of them. Oh, you sure don't. I'm. I'm. I. I yep. Yep. Fixing that now. All right. Uh. Uh, 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 Airdre, uh, Airdre, and Airdre. Okay. There you go. Do it. You also do might want to move the walls to the back so that I can oh, put them uh, on no, top there. If anything, I should move you guys to the front. Okay. Go for it. You're good. Yeah, uh, I think Airdre is effectively just marched these newbies like right up to where he needs them to be mm -hmm. just kind of very stoically being like remember your training don't worry about it as much as he's like a taskmaster now he's like trying to ex be extremely calm the whole time mm. like we definitely have this don't panic this is all good and uh, just sets them up on this line here all right all righty with all armies placed with mission rolled, with the battle prepared, your troops are gathered, you are all sitting atop a hill, preparing to send your troops in. They are all turning and looking up to you as the battle approaches. It is what's One offered. more thing that happens. Please. Uh, uh, a, the Thane reads from a scroll, and I, I'm gonna I'm gonna flavor this a little different, Foxy, if you're cool with that. Um, Am I always? Yeah, duh. Sick. Um, around the unit of lancers that she has, they they are in the woods awaiting uh, the opportunity to to strike. And she reads from the scroll, and we we see that like after image um, that we got when we saw Nyx of like her magic like bending everything, um, and the forest forms itself into another unit of cavalry. Um, that are mimicking uh, the Lancers. Uh, so I guess I have to give you that unit, yeah? Give me one second. Yes, please and thank you. Ooh. And I don't know how you're tracking damage on these, but uh, I got you. It's at half health to start. Mm -hmm. So they got are already at three. Got it. Cool. Uh, so yeah, that that should uh, stay updated. Yeah, I'm, I'm tracking our, uh, damage on my end. Uh, yeah, there you go. If you click on any of your units, I will I'll put their capture side the capture side diet as we go on to break. Which speaking okay. of which, as you're all facing your units and we are looking that they're all looking up to you on this hill as you prepare to go and join them out amongst the lines. Is there anything else left to offer before we come back and go to battle? Everyone. Today we are not an army. We are a coalition. We are standing hand in hand against a wave of oppressors who wish to wash our shore free from our blood. We will not let them cross. We will rebuff them here. They have nowhere to run. May the Everlight go out this day. A wave of glittering spears and swords and shields and lances raise high, just roaring in praise. Following that, now he steps forward, nodding to you all. All for the people. And as a resounding cry amongst wave and waves of troops, it goes out. All for the people. And as one, they turn 
bash their shields twice and stand to face the enemy approaching them as they march up shore. And before we head into battle, let's get a real quick break and let our commanders prepare for war. We'll see you all in just a bit. Don't touch that dial or that browser. We'll be right back. Ah. And we return to the scene of Bedlam. Battle is on for our party. War is joined. Everything has been laid. Plans are set. Soldiers inspired. And now there is simply nothing left to do but to win it, yeah? Let's get into it, friends. At the top of initiative, as the attacker, attacking force, the Everlight Church gets to do their initiative seizing, their Vanguard rank is gets to activate. So let's begin with that first. We'll start with, on the far right here, they'll just take their movement to move up. They will use their attack on this Westland Spear unit on the side here. So here it comes. They'll roll plus their attack bonus. That is definitely too low to score a hit. Uh, so that's a, just a miss on their part. Second unit, exact same thing, attacking the uh, other flanking unit. As they start to pour down the rows, moving in, attacking the walls from all sides, your spear units, who are, again, already accustomed, these are your veterans, these are not your levies, they lock themselves to a solid square, bring shields to the side, and raise themselves up. This unit here tries the exact same thing. They're that also is... on a wall, so I don't know if that... Yeah, gives... as their, as their, as their defense. It does increase yes. their defense. Yes. Yeah. After their defense, okay. this unit uh, rolled poorly anyway. So I'm going to chuck that guy the fuck out of here and move on as we go to the next unit. These guys here will activate. They will not a move. They will simply attack those spear units in front of them. That's a good hit. 18 plus 3 makes for a 20, 21 to hit total. Your defense is uh, 12 plus the 2 from your uh, from your wall. It's 14. Yeah, so that's a hit. They are inflicted one casualty. Now we roll to see if we can surpass their toughness. That is a bad roll. They do not. So you, the, your, your spear unit over here on the left, Rio, takes one casualty. I will mark it for you. Don't worry. Okay, I got it. This unit here doing the exact same thing against the unit up to its up uh, in front of it. As again, these guys start pouring up the walls, throwing ladders on them, and then trying to immediately climb up. Your spear units come forward. Spears ready, already jabbing down, killing off the first few men. We move on. That is a 13 plus. Uh, 13 plus 3 is a 16. Your defense right now is a 14. That's a pass. Gonna go ahead and roll uh, power versus your toughness. That's an 8 plus their power of 2. 10 does not beat your toughness. You take exactly one casualty there. Exactly. Same deal. So we're down to 5 still. This last unit here will push up and will attack the levies directly in front of them. That is a 16 to hit against your defense of not 16. So <laughs> they're gonna, they're hit. Uh, and here comes the attack roll against your toughness. That is a 13 plus two for power. 15 does not beat your 16 you have for toughness thanks to your increased armor. So again, they are pouring forth. They lash their spear charge directly into you. A man or two falls bloody over damage, but the levies already have their spear, their shields locked in. The glistening bastion, keeping them safe and defending them from the spears that come at them. That's their vanguard movement. We now move on to the generic combat itself. Up first, the Ranger General. I don't know why I did that. That's my fault. Let me cycle mm -hmm. it back around. Airdre, you're up. Yeah, we'll start with this uh, Westland Levy. Mm. Uh, Airdre has been like drilling them, making sure they're perfect. So they have uh, plus two to attack, plus two to power, and uh, plus one to damage. So we're going to see how that helps them. Yeah. All right. That means you're a grand total attack plus four. Please go ahead and roll your attack roll. An 18. As your levies are locked in and ready to defend, the first units that begin to pour over the walls, they immediately fall back to a tight square and move to defend themselves. That's a hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Or I guess you're rolling uh, you're, you're rolling power now. Power. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is uh, plus eight with that. Uh, yep. That's a hit. That's, That's damage. Yep. So, uh, you're dealt grand total of three uh... damage. Mm-hmm. So... You are, as these units start pouring up over the walls, coming around, your levies are already pushing them back, immediately funneling them backwards. Mm -hmm. And they start literally shoving guys down off of the walls. As immediately you can see their, you can see their commander 
Perrin looking back towards their officer, wondering if they should fall back. And they're, they're going to roll their command check at the end of this phase. Actually, no, they're going to roll it now, actually. Uh, here comes their command check. It's a EP13 morale. They do not pass it. They take one more casualty as they are now mm. down to two. So you batter this unit over here on the left. Next unit. Hey, I'm a... uh, because this is hard for mm. us to keep track of, can you put like red circles for each casualty that enemy units have taken? Uh, Here, let me see. I, I, I'm tracking them on, on my end. I can see if I can give you a thing. I don't know how many. You might be able to give us on. visibility. Yeah. You might be able to give us visibility to the health. Yeah. Hold up. Uh, you know what? I I got this. Hold up. Give me a second. I I, I know I, I know what to do here. Uh, for now, if you need if you need to need it, just like ask me and I'll tell you what a unit's uh current casualties mm -hmm. are. I will mark diminished with that symbol right there though. Okay. Uh, I don't know what symbol, but I'm sure I'll find it. Uh, the broken heart. This is oh, a broken okay, heart. Broken heart. Right. 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 Next unit. Like. Yeah, the, uh, I'm going to do the same thing with the uh, far right Western Levy. Oh, roll a hit. So, 11. Ah, oh, that's not going to make it. Oof. Nope. As you're, unfortunately, these Everlight infantry managed to, uh, your one commander, Levy, who was here on this one, he comes up to order the, the return charge. A shield comes up and smashes across his head. He falls back. Doesn't die. Mm -hmm. Just falls back in his stun. And since he can't give that order, the Levies aren't sure of what to do in that exact moment. They start defending themselves, but mm -hmm. Everlight soldiers are already pouring over the walls at them. Mm-hmm. Nothing else you cannot move yep. anything else, so. Lydia. Nope, thing. No nope. fucking I just Hey, you said Lydia and like my brain didn't even like oh it's You know what? I was it's, even gonna question the I just need to be a better person all as all. Fame. No, you're, your you're great. You're great. Uh, okay, so we're going to start by having uh, my diminished lancers uh, smash against the side uh, right here uh, on these double archers. Out of the uh, clamor of battle comes a gathering of illusory knights who charge forth, moving through not illusory. your own... Uh, you're right, plants. not illusory. They're you're plants. right. They're yeah. plants. They're made of plants. Hell yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, uh, Yes, yeah, so that's knows. a plus four attack. So. Yep. Um, oh, I think I got my cannon sounds four. going. Oh, yeah. Twenty plus four. Uh, <laughs> that's yeah. crap. But they get to attack again. That was a five. This one is a seven. What? Oof. Uh, I have another set of lancers, so we're just gonna do that again. You got it. That's a fifteen. Fifteen is going to hit the, the defense. They are affected by one casualty. Go ahead and roll your uh, power. Power. Uh, it's a 12. Beats it, beats it. Hey, okay, so that's uh, two damage there. Uh, so they are down to I, two. I'm going to do that again. Uh, oh, actually, I'm going to uh, trigger standard, um, because that gives uh, all of the other cavalry a free attack. Um, so, before follow standard triggers, they need to roll morale because they dropped two casualties. So let me have them do that very quickly. They pass. Uh, so yeah, they are. You're, the knights batter straight through them. The lancers bash straight through them and are in the midst of them, murdering them. Their leader has drawn a, a short sword and is like trying to defend himself against the lancer commander. Uh, you yeah. can go ahead and roll your morale check for follow standard now. Uh, okay, or is it command? So Sorry, it's, I believe it's, it's command. Command. Yep. Okay, so plus three. And let me Here get the DC for that real quick. I'm pretty sure that passes, but I'll double check if you give me one second. Uh, pulling up the maneuver right now. I should have already had it up, but I uh, did it. You're good, you're good. Uh, follow the standard? Yes. Follow the standards. When this use it, uh, succeeds it doesn't on have power a power test as part of an attack. Each cavalry unit. So there actually isn't a morale you're check right. with this because it's nope. not a maneuver. It's okay. just something that they let other people do. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, hey, Lydia, Lydia mm -hmm. uh, I think you should take the first attack here on the off chance that uh, you're able to smash this um, unit uh, with an attack and uh, a successful power check. Mm -hmm. The unit on the left side that's been diminished? Uh, the, or... the unit we're attacking... This one up here. Oh, no. Yeah. 
Oh, are we going after the archers? Is that what we're doing? Yeah, we're going after the yeah. archers to go after the cannoneers. That's, yeah. that's my strategy right now. Let me get them uh, marked as diminished for you. There you go. Got you. Uh, then, so you, yeah. Yeah, you get a free attack against them for a reaction if you would like it. Yeah, let's go for it. We'll All right. uh, see if that... As the uh, the command com- knight commander Janus, while dueling with this uh with this like with the this the archer commander, yes. slices like across his throat. He falls over bleeding. Janus lifts high a banner topped with a stag head, like sort of a stag's head emblem. The crest of House Verdans blazing across it, throws it high in the air and waves it back and forth. Lydia, on that signal, your knights who you I already you know discussed this turn and immediately break into a charge. They are currently still invisible. They just hear thunder approach. Yeah, yeah. They are still invisible. As the first one moves through and begins to run down some archers, but they are just there's so much chaos going on they can't even tell what's happening. There's nothing really seems like it matters that much. There is a second unit of knights though, so you can attack again. Yeah, we'll follow up with our other knights. There's just a lot of chaos and they probably just weren't anticipating diving into that back line. Why? Ooh, wow. The knights are not favoring you guys Roll today. 20 is I... hey, the water today. Uh, I will make my attack uh, with my uh, unit of lanterns that's already gone. That's a hit! hit. They have one casualty left. Uh, shoot dang. Oh. Uh, but luckily, luckily, my initial uh, set of lancers uh, still has the opportunity to uh, to end this. Indeed. Not quite. Not, not with an eleven, they don't. Not with an eleven. So your 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 cavalry are currently a bit bogged down in a, in a literal melee duel <laughs> with the archers. They recognize that if they actually want to smash through this, they have to probably cycle charge out. So they pull out and move back over. Those archers definitely ready arrows to attack them back, but they can't get a shot lined up as they are already pulling away. Your lancers are pulling around for another charge, clearly, but they're they're backing off to prepare that, that charge properly. You still have your wyvern riders, Lydia. Fuck I get that bonus! Fane! I'm gonna set the first attack from the Wyvern Riders against this uh, set of Palefall Archers. I'd rather... Would I rather? For you. Yeah, well, no, because the only thing... Well... Uh, no, we're gonna, we're gonna stick them against uh, the top set of uh, Everlight Crusaders. Do it. Uh, this group. Um, so that's uh, plus seven. Uh, Sixteen! Sixteen is... Yeah, you got them. Uh, and now the harder roll uh, to beat their toughness. Uh, oh, that's what he That does it. They are dealt nice. two damage. Poisoned. And they are poisoned. So as you're a squad of your wyvern riders, literally in midair, meets a group of crusaders. The wyverns are easily twice, if not three times, the size of these pegasi they're riding. And so they are literally just, like, having to gang up on these wyverns as they are, like, just tearing into them. In fact, you even see as... As they're coming forward, one Pegasi comes forward to, like, dive down on a Wyvern. It comes forward and just snacks on it. The rider falls off very much to their death. Um, as they are dealt two casualties. Sorry, they're not poisoned. Uh, they are weakened. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, in that case, I'm going to move down to the next one for my next set of attacks. Uh, see if I can get two sets weakened. Go for it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, bonk. Oof. This side, unfortunately, the D20. the D20 is the worst die. <laughs> All <laughs> homies hate D20s. Uh, okay, I, I do have one last uh, unit that I can do something with. Which I use D6s course, in my game. <laughs> uh, which is, of course, the Westland Levy. Uh, I think instead of having them use their magic wand, we are, yes, going to. Wait! Shit. Sorry, there's something uh, that when I hit with a heavy uh, character should have happened, mm-hmm. uh, which I did. Um, the the unit that I hit is disoriented until it's the end of the next activation. All right, mark so it. The, those archers are disoriented. Yeah, uh, again, they are. They got hit so hard. Hmm? They mm-hmm. got 
Uh, it's it's not just that they got bonked. It's that um, like you see uh, 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 among like all of the weapons have been blessed by Nyx uh, through me. Um, so they are incredibly fell and like uh, uh, they hit with like twice the mass that they should. Um, which is also going to be true of my Wesleyan levy. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's let's go. Do it. Wow. Oof. Ah. Damn it. They are holding the line and defending themselves, but the Everlight, clearly this plan was to push their vanguard through with, with, with force. So they are uh, not trying to, they're, they're not looking to back down. Their morale is high and they are zealous in nature. That all for you, Fane? Fucking zealous. That is, that is all five of the units that I control. We go on to Talv, who controls the archers back here. This unit here is it's disoriented. So we'll clear that condition and do nothing this round because that's what it has to do. Uh, as these archers who literally are looking for their commander look over and find their their commander on the ground, throat split open and hand reaching out towards the heavens and then falling over. As some other poor sat just says, um, reform the line, ready yourselves. And they start trying to figure out what they can with the few of them that are left in that unit. Otherwise, these archers here will activate they will actually put fire into, uh, they will trail and put fire into the Lancers if they can. Well, I mean, they can't because they're attacking a unit because, you know, artillery. Uh, so here comes that. Plus four for them. That's a 23. Uh, Against whom? The main Lancers. Ah, fuck. The, the not the fake ones. ones or? The, the, the not yeah, fake ones. I guess the... The vegan ones and the not vegan ones. <laughs> I can't with you. Here comes their power roll. That is a nine, which is not going to beat your your, your, uh, your toughness in the, in the slightest. You're good. Um, so you only take the one casualty on those guys. The second archer unit will trail and shoot at the illusory ones, or not the, the plant-based ones. Don't you see them. Those guys roll a nine. Sorry, seven, an 11. Not enough. Nope. So yeah, next up. The cannons. Uh, the can. This oh, no. first cannon is going to target. Uh, going to target the spear unit up on the fortification. So you are going to have a. Uh uh-uh. oh. Well, uh-uh. actually, uh-uh. nope. I lied. They're, they're going to target the fortification itself. Uh, auto hit it, and then they're going to roll toughness. Uh, they're going to they're going to roll. Uh, they're going to roll. Uh, roll power against it. Or no, sorry. They auto hit it and deal three damage against it automatically. Uh. Stone walls, I'm pretty sure, have a four. Four. So yeah, the wall under these guys right here is crumbling as a volley of cannons blast into it and just start to destabilize the wall. All the spears up here immediately start shaking and seeming like they're just like, oh my. Uh, this cannon here is gonna do the same thing to the to the wall up here actually. So they're both down to one health, uh, yeah. and that's and and that's Tal's activation. Uh, we go up next to Draka, who actually uh, commands the uh, who commands these uh, these guys up here in the front. Actually, so they get to activate. Uh, we'll go to this diminished unit over here first, which is going to just attack again uh, the spears over here on the right, next to the side of them. Uh, actually, no, they're gonna go for the, le- the levies in front of them. What are they gonna do? Uh, who definitely have stupid high defense because of the the fact that they're on the wall. Well, no, the defense is, is twelve. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a eight does not beat that. So that's a fail. Moving on. These guys here are going to try that same thing down here. That's less than an eight. That's also a fail. Uh, coming over poor, here. These poor, yeah. poor spears. Yeah, they're really just not, not doing fantastic. They're tricking, but we just have heavy, heavy armor for our boys. Uh, yep. As a... Wait, tr- I just saw the symbol for weakened. Listen, all right? <laughs> all right, okay. My back. Ah! Chronic back pain. Yeah. It's like that one reaction you did for the guy who's <laughs> falling over. I understand. <laughs> also, this unit of of crusade of, of crusaders, not the weakened ones, are going to go, going to attack now. They are going to do a similar thing to what you guys are trying. Actually, no, no, I lied. Uh, they're going to actually fight back against your uh, your wyvern riders here. Uh, I know they're, so these ones are not weakened. Uh, they're gonna try to attack against you guys. Plus six to this power roll for a good total of 16. 
16 does beat your defense. Top Wyvern Riders, please take uh, one casualty. Wait, does it, does it meet or beat? Uh, uh, 10 plus it's 6 is 16. Beats. beats. It, it fully beats. Okay. It fully beats. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, so top Wyvern Riders? Yep, one casualty. Here comes the uh, power roll. That is a... Oh, they crit. Cool, cool. Uh, 23. Don't worry, Chris doesn't do anything, but they take uh, two more damage. So grand total of three damage on the front, on the front, front Wyvern Riders. That takes them to being uh, at half. Yeah. Yep. So uh, you can go ahead and roll. Uh, you can go ahead and, and, and roll uh, roll morale for them, please. That's plus one. You have morale an deck. advantage. Yes. This because you have adaptable. Yep. Oh my gosh. Uh, wait, how do I do advantage on roll 20? Just roll twice. I don't know. I don't Just copy paste yeah. it to it twice. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Hey. Hey. They both pass, I believe. That's a big pass. It sure does. Mm. Uh, yeah, so, again, your guys, uh, they, while they definitely, the cavalry, right, while these, the uh, Crusaders are now engaging in an aerial duel with the Wyvern Riders, and they need to be taking some damage, but they are not fully out of it yet. Up next, we go to Rio. Alrighty. Um, fuck. Shit, dude. Okay, so... Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, the, the, damn, these I cannons are a big pain in my ass. My only thought is like cannons or wizards, because they both are going to yeah. do a lot of fucking damage. The cannons are yeah. going to get rid of our uh, placements. Our fortifications real yeah. fucking quick. Um. So while I figure that out, uh, I have a feeling. Real, that... real quick, do poison oh. arrows uh, do dot or do they do weakened? Because if they do weakened, they do they do a token of yeah, yeah they do a token of poison. poison. Yeah. Okay. Every power check you do. Oh, cool. I've been minus one. Ah, oh, get fucked. Sorry. <laughs> um, the uh, the Westland spears up on uh, this left uh, are going to. Uh, attack at these uh, the Everlight infantry that is disheartened. Diminished. Diminished. Uh, on the left. Diminished. Go ahead. Roll plus three. Easons. Plus three. You're that trying to beat a 12. 20. That's a beat. Uh, they take one casualty. You now need to roll one more time. This is plus two. If you beat a 12, they die. That is a 19. They die. As your spears turn, start pushing down and literally push onto the flank here and fully remove this unit here. They are going to go uh, bye bye. Uh, okay. Rio, if you'll let me, because I think this is part of the plan, I would like my uh, Westland Levy here as a reaction uh, move forward with. Follow uh, up? What's it? Follow up? Yeah. yeah. Go ahead and roll, more, go ahead and roll a, uh, a command check. This is a uh, flat die. I also have. And I have advantage on this for levy training. Yep. That's a real good ability they give monks. It's adaptable. Wait, does that mean double advantage? No, there's no such thing. Hmm, adaptable is, yeah. Okay, I guess adaptable would also give me that, but. Yep. Well, either I way. Uh, 14, though. Uh, 14 passes. I'm pretty sure it's uh, 13 for the mover, I think, for follow-up. Yeah, it's a 13 to. Cool. Mm -hmm. Hey, step forward. Uh, okay, Rio, go. Still got more to do. Alrighty. Um, for these, let's see. Fuck. Um, uh, for these ones on the right, I don't know who they should attack. Uh, who's the most weak one? I don't, I don't know. Been hurt, have they? Um. Yeah, I don't think either of them have been hurt. So. Nope. Yeah, neither yeah. has been hurt. Yep. Okay. Uh, they will attack, uh, the Everlight Infantry, uh, in the center, uh, kind of in between the two. Do it. Same deal. Roll plus three. Plus three. That is an 11 total. 11 is not going to beat it. That's unfortunate. As these front Everlight Infantry seem to be very elite, they formed to a tight Tetsudo. As your spears are now coming down on them. 
throwing down javelins and raining down curses and spears. They are literally raising their shields up high and using that to keep fighting in front of them. He's still got these two crossbow units to, uh, crossbows in the way watchers. Yes. What do you do? Um... Uh... I'll go after the cannoneers. Um... So... Let's see, that is a... I, okay, hold on now. Yes. I have a thought. Go on. If we can eliminate the pale pole archers on that right flank... Yes. Then oh, Lydia can follow up talk. with mm -hmm. Kahori. So mm -hmm. I'm not saying don't yeah. take any shots at the cannoneers, but I'm saying if you can clear a path for um, our archers to swoop, or not our archers, but our cavalry to swoop in on literally the next turn, we can fuck them right the hell up. Also, reminder, those yeah. archers over there have one casualty left. If you even hit them okay. once, they break. So okay. Try and hit them with the, the crossbow guys you got, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So I... Definitely think that would probably work best. Yeah, attacking the, the Palefall Watchers on the right. Do it. Uh, with my crossbows. Yeah, your archers come up. Your crossbows come up. They, they come high. Fire. What you got? 12. 12 uh, on the die? Uh, total. Oh, ah, meets it though. You do it. Your crossbows come forward. A volley of fire goes out. The the uh, the new uh, commander, the recently veteran commander who was taking over for the guy who's dead now, is giving orders when as he turns to turns, and at that point, they all just say, "To hell with this!" and they all turn and begin to run. <laughs> nah, run away. <laughs> nah. Cool. You still got those way watchers down here. What's the plan? Yup. Um. These it's way watchers, the yeah, they'll they'll attack at these uh at the at these cannoneers, um, at the uh, at the left cannoneers. Um, you want my advice? What's up? Go for the right ones. They're exposed. Uh, if you if you those hurt ones them, are gonna get. Well, if you but if you hurt them, that guarantees that Lydia can just break them. It, it, let's just they're still alive okay. next turn. Okay. Yeah. Alrighty. Yeah, we'll do that because then they'll have the uh the po uh the poison tokens. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, you do that. That is a, uh... Is that a plus eight to attack? Uh, yep. Okay, well that's They're a, a tier two, three two, unit. So. Yep. Oh, that's good. true. Yep. So, <laughs> that's like a, what, a 21 to hit? It hits! <laughs> Roll damage. Yeah. <laughs> Surprisingly. Um, that is a, a... What is it, a 13 plus five? Beats it! Roll damage. Yeah. Oh, no, you don't know that one. They do one damage each. All right. They, uh, are down to, they are down to four. They have a poison token on them. Yep. Uh, and they have uh, the uh, the pale falls have two attacks. So yep. do, do mm -hmm. poison tech, uh, do poison tokens stack? I'm gonna say yeah, yeah. They do for this purpose. Fuck it. Why not? All right. All right. If they don't, if they uh, don't, then sue me, Matt Colville. <laughs> no, we don't want I'm pretty sure they stack them. Battle. You're Cole, right. No, I, yeah, Cole, please. no, no, please. They're actually. begging you, Matt. Can, can you just, yeah, no, actually, Cole, I can't, we can't win one of those. I love you. I'm, I'm a big fan of your work, you can tell. Are they going to sue us for defamation? I don't I know. Played I played our game I, wrong. <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> defamation because I, I played the game wrong. You would get sued so hard by D&D &D already. Like. <laughs> All right, go ahead and roll the thing. Roll the second attack on who you want. Um... Yeah. Going for yeah, I guess guys. Since, yeah, since they're already at two, I think that would be plenty yeah. for Lydia. They are yeah. down to four so, so go ahead and roll. Everyone do. Yeah, they're gonna attack on the uh, the left cannoneers. You got it. Roll uh, attack. That is a nat twenty. That's a hit. Roll damage. Yeah. Twelve plus five. That's enough. They take. They are down to two and are also poisoned. Concrete. Fuck them up. As your archers, right up. Your 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 way watchers lens in. You tell them to put an art to put a volley on the cannons. They aim at the first at the first line. Put a fire. Put a line of fire in. You go to tell them, good job. You've done well. They are already reloaded and firing the other ones. These guys are quick. Like, damn. With that, we go to Lady. So, now that we've got that back line with the cannoneers exposed, yes, the uh, 
knights are gonna move forward and see what we can do about knocking them the fuck out. Hit it! 13 is enough! That's hit! Roll damage! Fucking god. <laughs> uh, Alright. Power? That's more than enough! They are down to two casualties. They are going to now roll for diminish. They fail! They are down to one casualty as this group of cannoneers appears ready to get the fuck out of here. You still have uh, one more unit of the knights. Although, can they also attack twice? Or am I wrong? I don't think the knights no, can attack, attack no, they, no, they cannot. But they I'm, can do wait, oh, actually, they they do, but... wait, hold up. They do two damage. I'm sorry. Yeah, These guys are yeah. gone. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah, just, just as you think, like, they're, they're maybe possibly gonna, like, somehow, like, survive this, a single cannoneer is sort of like, man, another group. The commander of your knights comes, literally plugs the, the like, the nose of the cannon with their lance, lets go, draws a sword, cuts down the, the, the cannoneers who are manning them. That group of cannons, out of action. Not happening. Which means they can follow up and move forward into those open spaces. Uh, they're every cavalry, so they're not really moving. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Um, I do have my... Desmond, they can attack the archers. It does mean this, they can attack the archers. This is to succeeding in a power test made as a part of an uh, That unit of cavalry can make a DC-13 command to a success. They're oh, their target unit suffers one additional casualty. Okay, so that yeah. doesn't... That doesn't apply here. Matter here. Yeah. But you killed them real... You should keep that in mind <laughs> in the future. What about the horns? But... Uh, we'll take that secondary units of knights, and they will move forward and swoop in on those archers in the back line. The first group bashes the cannons out of the way, the second group literally lopping their steeds over <laughs> the cannon position, directly bearing down on them. Roll. That's a hit! Go ahead and roll Annihilate. damage! Annihilate. Annihilate them. Yep. That's enough! They are they immediately diminished. Can I utilize with the, um the Wand of Fire in this, because that is the unit that does have the Wand of Fire. I think the, yes, actually. The opposed unit must exceed a power test DC 13 plus DS, or suffer one casually and gain a fire token. Uh, the main size. size yeah. So your DC's, uh, so what's, uh, that be makes DC 15? I think power so. Power test? Big fail! Yeah. So they Did are you just set on fire? the archers. <laughs> the powerful archers. <laughs> they are ablaze. They are ablaze. Uh, they also need to morale check. Look. They fail that. They are down to two casualties. Yikes. Uh, the, did they take the, the, so uh, also you have the maneuvers uh, spit upon their horns, which I'm pretty sure lets you do more damage to them if you want to. I want to look over what it does again. I gotta remember. Give me one second. Uh, da, 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 da. It allows for uh, a command test to inflict one additional casualty. Which, if you do that and it works, next turn they take fire damage, they're gone. Let's give it a go. You also have an advantage it. at that because you have adaptable on those. Yep. Guys. I've got adaptable. I also have a plus two to my command. Well, there you go. Do the I damn was, thing. So. I don't want to jinx anything. You're very good at commanding. Uh... <laughs> oh, don't, don't, don't say it. Well, one can hope. <laughs> well, what you got? Oh, was it that six? It's seven. That's seven and six. Just... Oof. Ah, oof, oof. Unfortunately. Yep, that one does not land, unfortunately. It's okay. They're All right. still on fire. <laughs> they are still on fire. Uh, yeah, still you have... have... Mm-hmm. You sure do. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you do have the two archers also in your yeah, command. Yeah, that's true. You still use. Which, the crossbows. I'm gonna move the in the back here. The left hand side. Mm -hmm. We're going to go after this group of pale fall archers on the left. All right. Get deer hunt off. Put that one a lot. Let's see if we can't break that line open. Go for it. 18 to hit. And. Power? 16 is power. One more damage. They are down to four. 
one more and they'll, they'll be diminished. I think we'll follow Stop up with the other group then. You got it, do it. Let me go ahead and mark well. the <laughs> Oof! Sometimes it just doesn't work out, you know? Sometimes it just don't work out. It just don't work like that. It's okay. Either case, anything else for you? Uh. Shouldn't those, no. because they're up on towers, be getting a plus two? Just saying. You're right. It oh, doesn't make a difference on that last no, no, it's power. Because they're, 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 uh, because they're, um... Uh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's power? Not yes, tower. power. Okay. Well, but we should just hold the, that in our hearts. That does mean mm -hmm. the left side archers are exposed now because they have dealt damage. Mm-hmm. So are the knights. The knights are now also exposed. They are. They are awake. Yes. These crossbows, however, here are not. Are still hidden over here on the right. Keeping that in mind as we move forward, as we head into Iman checking in next, his Everlight Phalanx. This single unit will actually won't. His Everlight Phalanx will actually all hold right now, and his single unit of Crusaders which uh, also are not the weakened ones. Or sorry, no, it is, it's are the weakened ones, and they will attack. Uh, weakened gives what now? I believe it's disadvantage. I'm going to claim it's that for now. If it's otherwise, let me know. Uh, I will... Really quick. Uh, it's not all in the same spot. It's fine. I'm going to have them attack your Wyvern Riders many times. Disadvantage. Uh, they fail. It's fine. Don't worry about it. It's okay. Uh, moving on. Uh, Tolv goes up next. He has command of the last group of these, these Dwarhold soldiers. They are going to actually push up to here to reinforce the flanks. They don't have targets. And his last group of Crusaders will also go. I mean, he can do this. Mm -hmm. I can do my levy up. Oh, you're right. Actually, I, yeah. He's, yeah, actually, you know what? Yeah, he's going to go ahead and fight, fight those levies there. Uh... It comes their attack roll. Nat 20. Plus 3 is 23. Yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, definitely going to hit. Uh, toughness rolls uh, 20 as well. Uh, yep. So I take two casualties total. Yeah. Don't worry about it. All right. As they are, your levies come up proud and strong, proud of their victorious skirmish. They charge down the wall and immediately see a line of stalwart dwarven soldiers who are clearly been fighting for a lot longer than these Everlight guys. As some of them start coming up, in fact, one soldier just got a couple of kills, comes forward, slashes his spear out, it misses, the dwarf ducks under him, swings with a hammer that comes up, connects with the chin, that person spins in a full flip, hits the ground, does not get back up. Uh, last thing's one's moved up. That's that. That's that. Top of the turn. Airdre. I'm about to call. I was about to call you Rio. I'm calling everybody everybody's name. Fuck it. Let's go. Mm. All know, right. Man. So. Let me do the next one of the units. Got it. Uh, yeah. So we're gonna start on the right with uh, this levy. He's gonna try and try and hit the uh, light infantry in front of him. You got it. 19 to uh, hit. 19. And Roll then, damage uh, now. Uh, it, it's actually eight. And that's a 16, and that's he enough. has two damage because All right. air drag. They go down to diminish. Roll morale. They fail. They take one more. This, this squad up here has two casualties left. Next. Yeah, we're going to have uh, this levy on the left. Uh, kind of same song and dance, just a different unit. You got it. As they push forward to attack these Dwarhold they're fighting. Nope, that's not the button. Good question. Beautiful. That's not going to hit. Nope. Maybe. Well, then I'm going to move the Westland Spears over here. Uh, Part of the mobility training that Airdre has been doing means that they are not affected by terrain when mm -hmm. it comes to movement. So they swing their way right on up here with no problem. All right. And they're drilling them on getting onto fortifications. Yeah. I, I think that's all I got. Cause I, other guy, yeah. yeah. Hey, we go to you. You're muted, friend. I want, I very badly want, wait, if somebody from my team moves, can I follow up as a part of that? Uh, as a reaction, so yeah. 
Yeah, okay, so my Westland Levy is gonna try to move so that I can give uh, Airdre another go, because I have something I want my... Oh, like as a reaction. Sorry. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, that's fine. So that's a command for them, right? Uh, to, mm -hmm. So you want them to do what now? I want them to follow the... Um, the the Spears. Spears, basically. Okay. So I can open up this space so that he can make some attacks. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Command roll. Okay. Uh, and I have advantage because they're adaptable. That's already good enough. Yep. Do it. Um, so, hey, Airdre, swoop in. So actually, he's going to do funny. that. And uh... Uh, before you do that, uh, also, but before you do that, they're going to react mm -hmm. to follow up as well since you moved. Ooh. Uh, so. Ooh. Sneaky. And they're also adaptable, and they pass. Boop. Mm. That was well. probably not a good choice on their part. <laughs> yeah, no. Nope. Yeah, that's not a good choice. Well, I mean, if they survived this... on all sides. <laughs> I'm just going to hit they him. But... <laughs> they, uh, they're actually vulnerable. Oh, no, they're not vulnerable from the rear. Because it's not by column. Okay. Nope. Yeah. Well, because also uh, I, I did hit them with a 16 those, and then a power check of 19, so <laughs> I assume oh. I just got him th three damage. So yeah, they're diminished now. They pass. They are still diminished, but they uh, are holding strong. Uh, okay. So now it's my turn. It sure is. Yes. Okay. Uh, it's. Not what I wanted to do, but I'll fuck him up with my Westland Levy. Do it! Uh, yeah, so that's a plus two attack. That's, that's a, a hit! 20, baby! Hey. Damn uh, Dude. Plus six. 19. Damn Osh. They baby. are down to one casualty. They are down to one casualty, and they are also disoriented. They sure are! Uh, yeah, as those as those heavier than they probably should be weapons, uh, just fuck them right the hell up. Uh, let's these pale fall archers uh, that are on fire. Yep. How much health do they have left? Two. It will go down to one at their turn. What do what do we think, friends? Uh, my hope was that I was going to be able to uh, drop Toxic Muck on the uh, Dwarhold Cannoneers, but that doesn't seem likely to happen now. Um, How many did you did you already attack them? Because you have two two uh, two cavalry units. Yeah, I have two cavalry units. So I, yeah, I'll smash through with the the. Uh, okay, so the the lancers. My first set of lancers is going. Mhm. Mm That's plus. Four to attack. Hi oh, yeah. I bought well, one. Damage. I bought them real good. Your illusory or your your plant-based lancers smash through and completely send this uh this this these uh these group of archers here who are clearly just were already trying to reorganize and reorganize for an attack. They were prepared for you all. They lit off a volley of arrows, open it by deter the charge. Your lancers, as they are made of plants, do not give a single damn. Plow straight through them. A lance made of a, a tree trunk goes straight through their commander's chest and pins into a, to a wall as, well, yeah, they all break and run. Oh, it's uh, the Cannoneer's turn. Yes, it sure is. Uh, oh, oh God. that's not good enough. Oh, I oh, think that is their turn enough. to attack. Oh. Yeah, it is good enough. Uh, okay. <laughs> and then, bop. That's enough. That's... Your Again, same plan. One Lancer group smashes through, and following what the Knights did, the actual group of Lancers hops directly over the battle the other ones are, smash into the Cannoneers, and immediately... No, uh, no, no this is the same group. Oh, you're right. Two attacks. Fair enough. There you go. Yeah, well. Uh, you can also give your own other Lancers a reaction to hit them now. Well, I mean, here's they're the... gone. They're gone? Okay. They're gone. gone. They're, they're gone. Oh, gone. Oh, gone. Yeah, they're gone. Well, they're they're toasted. God. Yeah, they're very dead. <laughs> I think that means that we just keep this rolling, uh, and we. Uh, yeah, we're just gonna roll through that last set of archers because uh, I'm not gonna let them pick off my friends. Mm. 
<laughs> why? Because fuck them, that's why. That's a fuck hit. Fuck them. Second one won't go, won't go through. Uh, go ahead and roll the uh, other second attack. Uh, oh, yeah. Wait, do I have to trigger a power attack to get that? You have to trigger a power yes. to do that. Okay, trigger power. Okay, great. So, second attack. Uh, uh. Hey! That's a hit. Down to two. That's uh, an, down to one. Down to one. Uh, hey, Lydia, you want to do the honors? <laughs> I've got defensive reactions to save up this time. That's Is that something again. I can do now or after? Yeah, go, <laughs> right, right now. Right, right now. now. It's a reaction. Yeah. It's a reaction. Right this second. Right this moment. Go, go, go. go. Do the thing. Descend Get em. upon them. Indeed. Plus five on your attack roll. You only can, that's it. That's enough. They're gone. <laughs> they just that's trample over. They don't even swing yeah. swords. Completely on a, completely not prepared for this tactic that you guys have been working on for a while. The follow up <laughs> of lancers into knights to completely demolish the back line. Tolv is preparing to order more cannon fire, and then he notices the guns have gone silent. There are no cannons. <laughs> and he's just like. I must report to my lord. Clearly concerned about the way this battle is going. As we go on to him, uh, only trouble is he doesn't no. have any more units to command. No, you're right. No, I still you do have the, you're two right. more units. Go, go, please have fun. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, attacking the Crusaders, uh, hoping that I can score another round of Aerial battle. No way. Uh, so that's a 15 meets beats. Beat it. Uh, and then, uh, can you just tell me what the... I, I keep having to scroll back and forth. Three, power. Three. Yep. Thank you. Uh, not quite. Ooh, okay, so that's some damage. Uh, I'm yep. gonna try and hit that same group again, because Weekend apparently doesn't just go away at the nope. end of the turn, which is incredible. Uh, uh, that's, that's no dice, I think, on that second attack. Uh, nope. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Still got one more group of uh, uh oh no that's it. That's, that's no, cool. that's you're it. right, you're right, you're right. Okay, cool. So yeah, we go on to Tolv now. Uh who doesn't have any units left. And so nothing happens for him. Shame. He goes off to report to Amon. Can we do Damn uh, shame. can we do a um uh tier check right now? You sure can. Uh looking in so go ahead and count up you guys' points, so count up each of the units you control, go ahead and count up how many points you have. Oh wait, no, that'd be, so, isn't it the amount of units it's each and tier. then each, it's, it's, it's each tier. tier? Okay, yeah. 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 So that's... Twenty-one for the Seven. total for the, Ever, for the Everlight. I think they've lost. What's the total number? I think we have 27. Total? Oh, yeah, okay. so. I'm six myself. It? Yeah, double. Yeah. Yeah. Double is the number. Oh, okay. Okay. So you're getting, you're getting there, friends. You're getting well, there. You see, once we take out the Crusaders, I don't think they'll have much left. You're not wrong. Because the, their Crusaders we'll are all tier three. Yep. I, I hit. That's true. Here's, that's Leo, true. You're going to have to work on that. But uh, I have reactions from my Lancers uh, that can harass them every mm -hmm. time they score a hit. Yep. Um, yeah. We also are we also aren't under threat from cannon fire anymore. So it's like that's true. Um, Speaking of yeah. which, uh, Draka's up. Uh, she's going to have her Everlight infantry just keep putting on the hurt at these Westland Spear guys if they can, as they continue to try to pour up the still heavily damaged walls. First one's gonna miss entirely. Second one. Uh, that is a 20. Oh, I see. Damn. That's a 22 hit over there, which is definitely gonna hit even through your uh, your bonus to uh, to defense from the uh, from the uh, from the wall. And so here comes the damage roll. As an 18 plus two for a dirty 20, which is gonna patch your toughness. So this what's this figure here will take two more casualties. That will bring them down to two. They are diminished. I need you to roll a morale check. D20 plus fun. Uh, and plus I think you have advantage on that. Yeah, yes, you do. Adaptable. Mm -hmm. adaptable. Yeah. Uh, what is the the DC for that? Looking for a 13. Uh, okay, I got a 14. So that's nice. good enough. All right, 
They are sitting here at two casualties, it. but they are diminished. Uh, and then her remaining two units, or sorry, remaining one unit, uh, this one right here, actually, yeah, sorry, remaining two units. These guys right here will attack. They're going to attack. They are confused. Yeah, you're right, so they can't do anything. So they will reform themselves and try to hang on while these guys here attack these levees down here. Uh, uh, Sorient actually, yeah. I think, means that they can move or attack. Oh, they can like, um, do one or the other? Oh, no, it's, 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 it's sorry or, or disorganized. It's not two different things. Disorganized just can't do either. Uh, I think it's disoriented. Okay, in that case, they will just attack uh, at the levees over here on the right. Uh, with a 19 plus 3, that's a 22 to hit. Yeah. yeah. I'm still going to hit. I, do, I cause disoriented, not disorganized. Yes. All right, in that case, here comes uh, okay. the damage roll. That is a 16 plus 2 is 18 for power. Yeah, so I, I don't think I can up that. Nope. They are taking two. They are down to four casualties. Not diminished yet, though. Uh, and that's her. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's it. That's, that's anything. Uh, oh, wait, no. These guys down here. This one's over here? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Here we go. Uh, and that's a missed. Those levies. Yeah, those <laughs> levies have the plus two. Yeah, they, they got fucking bodied anyway. It's fine. They missed uh, as again, they are pouring over the walls, but cannot seem to gather, gain a good foothold. Rio, it's on you. Alrighty, cool. So, um, these, uh, the, the Westland Spears on the left are going to attack right back on this uh, Everlight Infantry. Um, and so that's a uh, plus three to attack. That is a 19. That's a hit. Don't I have... No, I thought that... Uh, oh, yo, uh, we just got a bunch of gifted subs. Oh, Chat. look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. I just accidentally pulled up chat and saw that. There you go, look at that. Um, cool, appreciate you, love. All right, go ahead and roll damage, bro. Yeah. That is a 15 plus, I think that's two? Against two, are you attacking again? Uh, the Everlight Infantry, right? Okay. Alright, that yeah. is definitely both good for two damage total. Stopping up from them to four. Next cool. unit. Um, these, um, let's see. You got these guys here. You got your White Watchers. Do... Yeah, okay, cool. uh, yeah, you these Westland Spears will do the, the same song and dance on the you ones in front of them. I don't Hit know it. what all diminished means Nothing. in terms of attacking. Okay, Nothing. Cool. Nothing. That is a 14 there's, there's plus There's certain third. other abilities that Hit. trigger off of Diminished, um, but, yeah. Hit. Damage. Cool. Uh, not 20. Oof. You are damaging them as your spears are still, even though they are Diminished, they are gathering, rallying themselves, and still pushing the fight forward. Y'all are holding the line on these walls incredibly well, even though they are still pouring out at you all. Doesn't a, a net 20, or a, I guess a crit on uh, on damage uh, double it or something? No? Not in battle. Okay, I thought, it, I thought I remembered something about doubling the casualty. And um, you get that is a special thing for you. Yeah, for check your it. your rogue stuff, but uh, I don't think so for don't the rest of us. All right, we'll, we'll, so. we'll figure that one out. Uh, go ahead and hit with your, uh, your crossbows now. All righty. So these crossbows will actually move. Uh, right here. You got and it. Then uh, open fire on this uh, on this Everlight infantry that has very foolishly followed right into the center of everyone. Roll damage. Um, and I rolled a hit. So I rolled a hit. That is a. I think. I think I also get advantage on that, don't I? Uh huh. Do you? Uh, cause. Yeah. For. Uh, yeah. For skirmishing. Close range. All right. Go ahead. Roll. Yeah, yeah. Close range, a, close range, uh, yeah. Plus two and advantage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, stay real strong. What you got? Uh, so, 17 total to attack. They're gone. Uh, your crossbows will fall into line, bring up. This Everlight Infantry seized an open line straight through past your defenses. They prepare to charge. Their commander comes forward, immediately moves past the first shield. To a row of crossbow armed armed Verdanian infantry. Single volley puts them to the ground. They Single die. Volley. Oh. They die. 
in the, they died to a man in front of the gates. <laughs> hey, yeah, uh, and, uh, Airdre, do you want to follow up and uh, close ranks? Uh, yeah, I was going to say if uh, no one else is going to, then I will. Yeah. I, I don't want to get my Westland Levy into uh, combat because I want them to start producing poison swamps. So hey, I got a nat 20, so uh, don't even use, use the advantage. All right, follow up. Here. You just move right in there. Yep. Yeah. Wait, does that let um, me move my full movement or just no, one? Just one. Pretty sure. Okay. At least. I'll look it up. We'll find out. Oh, it's the former space. So yeah, yeah. it's just mm -hmm. one. Okay. Uh, Rio, you got anything else? So your, your watch is here to use. Yeah. So uh, mm -hmm. these uh, Pale Fall Way Watchers will, uh, will move here and uh, we'll begin to fire at uh, some Everlight Crusaders, probably this uh, this one furthest down. Um, yeah, that one. Do it. Uh, and yeah. I'll let you know right now, these ones here, we can have three casualties, have, have three, uh, three casualties left. These other two are unarmed. Yeah, so the I guess the idea is to just start weakening them because I know like the, um, the cavalry uh, that we you... have, we'll be able to like start wiping them. Yeah, you can poison them. I can weaken them. Yeah. Uh, so we have okay. slightly different tasks. Well, I mean, oh, yeah. also he can weaken them with this unit. Oh, you mean damage wise? That also makes sense. Yeah. No, can also do weaken. Oh, like... Wait, what? oh yeah, elf, elf archers can. Do... The elf archers can do weaken too, depending yeah. on how they roll. Uh... You got it. Roll the attacks, yeah. and if it matters. Yeah. Fuck them up. Yeah. That is a 17 raw plus eight attack. Are you going at the one of the fresh ones at, or at damage? one of the fresh ones? All right, they are hit. Roll damage. That is a uh, 15 plus eight, 5. five. Yeah. It goes through. We take two. So they are down to a DC 10 then. Power test. They have to or become yeah, they have to succeed on a oh. DC 10 power uh, saving throw. They pass it. 23. Okay. Cool. They're still poisoned. They also though. still get poisoned. Yep. <laughs> yeah. They mark that off. So they are down to are two. Uh, they they have suffered two damage. Correct? Yes. They have four left. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Um. Shoot again. Uh, double up. Yep. Yeah. Uh, that is. And they still have that plus two, so that is, I think that's a, a 19 to attack. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It. Alrighty. Um, isn't it also a plus two to, uh, initial? Hopefully so. They fail. Uh, they drop yeah. down to two. No, wait, sorry. I'll put them around. They fail. They pass. Sorry. Right. Still three. Mm. Go ahead and roll your, uh, plus, uh, plus your power. Yeah, so that's an 18 plus 5. That's bad. That, yeah, that's enough. They dropped down two categories left. And yeah, so yeah, they are... And they have a uh, second two poison tokens. So. Yep. So they so are... I think at the start of their next turn, they just... They sure do. No. <laughs> <laughs> These elves are mean. These elves are very mean. These elves are fucking poggers. Okay, all right. Anything yeah. else for you? Or is that it? <laughs> <laughs> move him back. Um, Lydia, do the damn thing. Move him yeah, back. Move him back. Yeah. All right, Lydia, hit it up. Do the damn thing. So we're on the back line right now, right? With the cavalry. Mm -hmm. Yep. So let's just turn and go after one of these failings. Hit it. It's, we'll go after the one on the right. We'll blast him. Hit it. Wand of fire. Blast it. Blast it with the wand no, of I'm fire. Not. <laughs> Unfortunately not. Or not. It's okay, I have another unit. You sure do. That's a hit. Give me damage, summoner. Bitches. That's both sticking. Uh, your knights do two. They take a grand total of three. They are down to five as they got responded to armor. So they, they, they were at casualty value eight. Excellent. Uh, I just want to say those units have uh, the battle hymn trait, uh, yes. and I just want to say that's sexist. <laughs> that <is awful. laughs> 
<laughs> it okay. All right. Okay. Right. And sexist microaggression. Sorry. Hey. I think this archer unit on the left that's been exposed. We're gonna go after that other um, crusader unit that hasn't been harmed yet. All right, hit it. No, I'm not. Negative. It's a negative. Let's see, see what the other one does. Yep. Let's go see how it. the other one does. No. Nope. They are too evasive. Evasive. They're stealthy. All right. They, they uh, be stealthy. <laughs> the, the phalanx will activate. Uh, this one here will finally press forward some. Um, the last two will just hang out where they are. The Crusaders over here will activate, and because of poison, will immediately, uh, die. <laughs> Their horses just fall out of the sky. So, you know, that's how that happens. Um, and that's actually the entirety of Amon's, act Amon's activation. Uh, just like what a, a, what a little fun. weenie baby. <laughs> what a, what a dumb <laughs> child. <laughs> go over that to, guy. Go over to Morahem, who has the Dwar hold, and we're gonna hold out where they are, except... These guys here will attack again against your levies over here, over here, uh, Erdre. You want to remind me how many, uh, casualties they have real quick, if you don't mind? Uh, they have not been hurt yet. Oh, oh yeah, right. My fault. Uh, cool. Let Poor me levy. do the thing. Let me do the thing, then. Uh, wait, no. You sure? Uh, no, I do think they took one. Yeah, actually. yeah, I yeah. Think yeah. I took that to... Two. It's a two. Two? All right. So, yeah, they're at four. All right. Here comes their attack. Uh, 16 plus 3 is in, uh, uh, 19. Which... Yeah, it's gonna hit them. Here comes the damage roll. That's a 20. 22. So, uh, yeah, take two. I gotta roll me a morale check. Yep. Pass. Oh, well, the first one makes... Alright, you are at 2 left on that one. This last group will hang out where it is. We are back at the top. Let's check numbers again real quick, friends. As it's looking like... Three, six... Eight. Final number for the church. Do they have? 16. Foxy, did any of the uh, Everlight Crusaders manage to score a hit? Uh, no, they have not. They've been, they've actually been rolling very poorly. Ah, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> <laughs> fuck. But also, Boo, uh... They're still a little more than half of us, so. Yeah, not for much longer, but. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like mm -hmm. it's good. All right, we're coming back around then. It's looking like it might be the end. Actually, check in, players. Do y'all want to go mm -hmm. one more round of combat for this battle? Or do y'all want to wrap this up and get moving to our last to our last setup here? Because I got a thing. But if y'all ain't ready for the thing, the thing won't happen yet. So, here's... Here's where I'm at. Team. Uh, this feels like something that we now have like a kind of overwhelming numbers advantage. Um, and we also still have all of our best units fielded. Uh, mm -hmm. I think this is a matter of time. Uh, and I think the outcome of the battle is more interesting than playing out the details. I think so. Yeah. So, we're, we're, all right, I, I'm, I mean, I, I will speak as the person commanding the enemy troops and say that were this like a game of 40k, I would be more than fine with considering a surrender here as, by the rules of the game, does not seem like I have much chance of, uh, of winning here. So, yeah. here's how it happens. <clears throat> the battle begins to work itself to a steady rhythm. Your troops mashing against theirs, their initial charge, stalwart, valiant, Many have died. In fact, you can see that though she definitely took some wounds in the initial charge, uh, Reese, your subcommander, uh, Airdre, is up with a wound in her arm, sword still high and blood on her face, issuing troops forward. You are pushing them back. Wave after wave after push after push. And when they recognize they have no back line, they begin to break and run. And as you are, as they're slowly falling out and around, you're recognizing that it's just it's gonna take... Erdre, you're a commander of troops. You've seen enough war. In fact, all of you have seen more than enough war to know what it's like when an army is close to breaking. You know it's usually just that one more push. 
one more step, one more, you know, one more push there, and you have it. Uh, instead, what you notice here is that as you're pushing them more and more, Morahem and Iman are barking and screeching and braying at their own troops, practically demanding that they stand and fight and die for their god. Iman is absolutely fervent in this, demanding that his troops give absolutely no quarter. And as you are all watching this, thinking, we're bleeding too many troops. We're going to win this, but it's, it's, it's going to cost us too much. And just as you are doing that, Fane, you are above the battlefield, watching with your wyvern riders, flying with them as you are pushing back the last of the crusaders. You begin to dominate the skies. And as you're thinking, almost the exact same thing Airdrie's thinking, just that we just need one last push. Why won't they break? Then you start hearing it. A beating like repeated tornadoes on the wind. Once and then twice and then a third time as the air around you itself begins to reverberate and howl. The wind making it almost hard for you, to, you and your wyvern riders to fly freight. In fact, their wyverns begin to bray back a bit. Not excitedly, but almost nervously. Like a bigger predator is around. And then you hear it. As flying down high over the battlefield on high red wings, swoops down Jalthroxe. The Crimson King. And with a brain have a little fun. wave of fire from his gullet, reds and oranges and whites blast down at the ground, sending crusaders and individuals, cannoneers, archers, anyone that hadn't yet scattered immediately begins to break and run, uh, sending uh, themselves. Sorry, go ahead, please. Uh, so uh, there's a. Um... It's not an actual dagger. It's basically a makeshift piece of wood, but uh, Fane pulls it from her belt anyway and cuts her hand and holds it to the sky. He looks over, lets loose a, a loud and proud roar, and then turns in a full loop, spinning and dives down to the ground, smashing himself down amongst their lines and tearing into them with claw. Over the hill, you can see a wave of his cavalry, the Red Wake, already making their way over the hill to, to reinforce. And behind them, you can hear the lumbering, thudding, bashful footsteps of an entire parade of giants at their wake, able to easily keep up with the cavalry given their elongated stride as they come clubs high, spikes braid up on their armor, and start thrashing into the line of the Everlight from every angle. Dragons on one, cavalry on another, giants from another side, and then something else. Out of the ground bursts a set of massive stone hands. They come up and slam down on the ground and then heave upward as you all see a massive serpentine head attached to a huge stone construct. The statue hiding behind Ithrica's throne in her throne room. As it is now an animated construct and begins to just pick up and crush individual soldiers, toss them around. And it's at this point you all recognize, and by the screeching and whooping of your troops, you think they can recognize, this is in the bag. And it's at that moment, from the front, Amidst a phalanx of crusaders who literally split their shield wall aside just enough, four figures trudged forward to the front of the battlefield. To their right, Talf, Bishop of Eyes, mask still present on his face, black hood still up over his head, as he almost moves in a way that lets him kind of blend into the crowd. As soldiers are still scattering and moving, it's almost hard to keep track of him. Next to him, Moraham, Bishop of the Flame. Bald head still crowned in that golden circlet, although blood is covering it now. He is still preaching and braying out 
hands covered in bright red flames, his priest robe still pristine white. On the other side, a familiar face, clad in wrought black and dark blue iron uh, me uh, metals, uh, uh, iron armor, shoulder pads sticking high and proud up, framing her face, her hair back in a tight ponytail bound with not the red ribbon you've seen previously, but a green one. In one hand, a mace ending in chains with a handle. In the other, a long golden stick. Braca, Bishop of Iron. And finally, at their head, gold and red armor displayed in front of him. With his twin-headed axe in both hands, he points it forward to the both of you, or at all of you. And Iman Talem, Crusader Lord of the Everlight Church, offers exactly one word. Come. And with that, we'll draw to one last break before we bring this adventure home, yeah? I you all. Question. Go, what please kind go. of armor is, uh, is Amon dressed in? Is it like, like real flashy and gold? Yeah, it is mostly gold right. plates, but layered in kind of red inlays. Like there's like a red tabard on. Over his armor, he has this blazing red uh, like tabard with the golden fort symbol of the Everlight Church directly on top of it. All right. Cool. Thank you. He looks prepared to face you all in single combat. Your troops are amassing around you all and leading the for charge forward to press and bring, f and bring the last of the Everlight down. As we move our way over on the final battle map and ready ourselves, you all can place yourselves on the map as we need to, but we are going to go to a very, very quick break. And we'll see you all for the finale of the finale in just a day. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Welcome, friends, to what will certainly be the conclusory, well, the conclusion segment of our conclusion session of Against the Light. We resume as the battle finally turned, as victory was assured for the forces of House Verdans, and now, at the end of it all, the Crusader Lord and his bishops come forth to face the party. Before all that, we cut to a previous scene, as one member of the High Council Decides to, well, gain some counsel. Fane, take us there. In the uh, days leading up to the battle, um, Fane keeps having uh, nightmares about a shadow following him on um, and is, is tormented by the idea of uh, Ithraca communing with Saraya, um, the goddess that Fane, uh, one of the goddesses that, that Fane worships. Um, and so she turns to her uh, magic mirror with its um, weaving and spider motifs uh, and asks it a question. How does Ithraca, who loves the weft, benefit from Iman's death. Mm. The mirror takes a moment, a long considering pause before it finally speaks back to you, its voice reverberating through the area and also sort of directly into your mind. And it says, <clears throat> the weaver's web casts wide in its girth. With the Crusader Lord's power, a greater sister she may birth. That's one question answered. Uh, her next question, what is the ultimate goal of the one shackled to Iman's soul? For the God trapped in the cathedral, in the church cathedral, no true dreams sing, but what dreams can be had for a dying thing. I Nay. beseech you, teach this this humble adherent how to prevent Ithraca's interference. 
not really a question, but it is a request. Mm. The mirror thinks and says, Deity's power unbound is easy to steal. To prevent this death, a pact must be sealed. We see Fane like it's it's a flashback to um, uh, Fane in the uh, tent with Nauri, um, and for a moment it looks like she's about to call for. one of her her regular attendants uh, and she thinks better of it um, and she slips the uh, mirror in and amongst Nauri's things um, hoping to hide it from anybody who might find it should she perish in battle mm. and I think that's where we'll leave that indeed <clears throat> we'll cut back to the group of you all gathering the High Council is assembling as their troops are pouring forth. You've given off commands to your subcommanders. They have made sure your troops will deal with the rest of the battle. The four of you all are gathered here and just in the distance. Just currently outside of earshot, but clearly making their way towards you all, <laughs> is Amon Talem and his bishops. However, I had a player request for a scene here. So as you are all gathered here preparing to make your final stand, I pass the scene off to you. Take us there, Lydia. What's happening? And I actually met Lydia this time, see? Mm. It was intentional, huh? I'm so proud of myself. And she'll come to a pause and look around at the others who the council members, her friends, and ask, we are still certain, we are resolved in this. I cannot allow these people to continue what they're doing, to come back and fight another day. Whatever sour, foul thing has shackled itself to a Montalem, it is not. It is not right for him to bear it. We need to deal with him, and the rest will reveal itself. Rio will uh, will ready his uh, will ready his weapons, and he'll just say simply, "Let's show these fuckers their place in the dirt." Anything else from you all? Then. Uh. <laughs> Take heart. And hold that resolve close to your chest. And she is actually going to cast a spell here, which we're going to do enhance ability. Uh, Bears Endurance, which grants 2d6 temporary hit points to everybody. There you go, friends. Go ahead and roll that uh, 2d6 for me real quick, if you don't mind. That'd be real cool. Super appreciate that. What do we got? Six. Uh, cool. 
Uh, do we want to count that roll Wait, for all of us? Do we each roll that, or I think it's actually something? I think Lydia. Oh, you each roll it. Okay, fair enough. Or do wait, we, do we? Yeah. I would assume is that Lydia rolls it and you and you each gain that amount. That was that was my thought for simplicity's sake to keep track. Probably. Of oh, it is. Oh, like it is me. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Well, it's not six. Well, maybe we get better than six. We'll find out. Fingers crossed, baby. Fingers bungus. No, we're exactly not. Six. <laughs> exactly <laughs> six. Exactly six. Exactly six. Not the different ones, which would be statistically very probable. Nope. nope. The same exact roll. same no. roll. Yep. All right. Well, <clears throat> well 20 the bishops plod forward, not rushing at you all, not charging, calmly walking, even as their army breaks around them. They come forward, approach you all, prepared for war. Iman hefts his axe. And as you all ready yourselves, he levels it. And his generals come rushing forward as we move ourselves right back into initiative. Don't bother re-rolling. Like, There's no need. Go ahead. I would like to, like, as, like, he's like, come. Uh, Rio will, like, point at him and say, and why should we honor the challenge of a man who's dressed like the floor of a brothel? Incomprehensible. May the Everlight have Damn mercy it. on your soul. Yes, I Anything. do, I mean. <laughs> Incomprehensible. Incomprehensible. <laughs> so, right. uh, I'd imagine Fane doesn't have to say much to be like, for Airdre to pick up, hey, do not be too close to these people when this is over. Yeah. She, she turns to you and is like, I'm going to blow him a kiss, and you know what that means. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I believe with 50 feet of movement, I can get here and then here. Sure. And so, uh, Air Trey doesn't draw his sword, it's still at his hip. He'll get right next to Amon, and, uh, I'm going to use my bonus action flurry of blows and try and punch him. Okay. And if that doesn't hit, I'm gonna add another thing to it. But uh, the 19 does hit. Yes, we to be it. Cool. Uh, so I have now, as I as, as Airdrie punches him, it reverberates, and Airdrie just knows like the structure of his body. Uh, I doubt that he has it, but if he is immune or resistant to any damage or uh, conditions, I get to know. Uh... Not important. But... I don't yes. know. I think that's very important. Yeah. He is immune to frightened. We can all communicate with each other. He is immune to mm -hmm. frightened. He is also immune to radiant damage. That's a zealot. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, and he's also analyzed for the rest of the fight. That may be important. As uh, Airdre doesn't even say anything to him, just in a flash of movement, moves to this guy, and he can take a swing if he wants. But... He's sure going to. Uh, attack of opportunity. Uh, Airdre, tell me, does a 28 hit you? Yeah, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna hit me. Okay, I'm gonna roll damage now. Uh, let me get my dice together. I'm sorry. I forgot how much damage he does with these things. I got it, never mind. Uh, I need this die and I need this die right here. Excuse me, friends. First time using an NPC. Uh, that's gonna be 14 damage to you. Uh, eight. That's sorry. That's uh, that is. Uh, I just deleted my whole character somehow. Oh, I killed Airdre. Oh. I did it. He's dead. Oh, I killed him. Vanished. One, <laughs> one, one, one attack, and he's dead. Just like that. Here, I'll, I'll oh, give me one second, boss. I got you. Reduced to atoms. Why did that? I got you, boss. Don't you worry. I'm. Hang on. Hold, hold tight. You're back. I'm sorry. But yeah, you're gonna take uh, eight. Three. <laughs> Radiant damage and six slashing. So that is to my uh, extra health. But then, uh, yeah, then Erdry's gonna just punch the same the other guy over here. The oh, for it, the Bishop of Secrets, eyes. Bishop of eyes. That's what it was. Uh, and apparently you're not working that well right now. 
Uh, that one hit Airtree pretty hard. Uh, <laughs> And Edra, uh, you, yeah, yeah, I, I think you 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 move to go for you you, you are Edra, you're fast, mm -hmm. so you're used to moving between targets. Mm -hmm. You hit him on, immediately go to move for tall. You don't see the flat of the axe come out and just smash you in the face. I do have just a detail question. All right, is uh, tall like wearing armor, or is he dressed like a bishop? He, I mean, he's definitely. I mean, he's got a robe on, so you can't really tell right now. Okay. Uh, then you know what? I'm gonna uh, use one. I'm gonna see if I can't. Oh no, this is a critical fail. Never mind. Yep, that's all I'm gonna do is I'm going to use my action to uh, run to here, and he can also take an opportunity attack if he would like. But he sure will. Uh, he is going to. Yeah, he's gonna actually absolutely do with that thing you just said. Once I pull up a sheet again, sheet again. Sorry, my bad. All right, here we go. Uh, Airdre does a. Uh, that's the wrong bishop. Sorry. Uh, 16 plus 8 hit you. Yep, that'll hit. Uh, here comes damage. That is a... That's 10 slashing. Need you to make a con save. Ooh. That's a fail. Oxy, well, while they're doing that, can you put on the ears? <sighs> God damn it. They're on the bed. One second. Air Drake, while I'm getting these ears, take a... 18 poison damage. Damn. I've been hit. There we go. I hit my leg for this. I hope you all know. All right, I'm back. Well, I didn't go the way I planned. Sure didn't. Uh, Fane, we're on you. Okay. Uh... Uh, yeah, Fane's just going to call out to, uh, uh, Draka. Gorgeous spear you got there. And then she'll kind of tap, uh, the, the window in her armor. And, uh, the, the tip of the spear will kind of vibrate down to say, like, hey, Hello. Uh, you can stab me in the chest if you'd like. Draka locks eyes with you. Iman cuts her a look. Anything else for you? Go ahead. Your turn. Uh, sure. Yeah, no, of course. Are I you sure? so think it's five spaces. I I'm trying to get it to be the right size. Uh, that's a little bit bigger than this, but... Oh, what the hell? Sorry. You got, don't worry about it, I got you. What you need? I'm trying to draw a big circle. There we go. Okay. Uh, all of those people are now inside the reach of... Uh, what is it? Hunger of Hadar. Got it. Uh, what I do? Please, all of them, make a dexterity saving throw. Dexterity saving throw is coming right up. Starting with them on. Uh, actually, hold up. Starting with... Uh, with more of him. Next very saving throw. What's the DC? Uh, 15. Uh, more of him passes on a 17. Tall. Fails on a 13. Or actually, hold up. What's his dex bonus? I actually gotta make sure that's right. Uh, Tall. Uh, actually, he's, uh, 11 plus 5 is 16. Passes on a 16. Uh, Iman. Uh, will fail, actually. And so Amon's, only Amon is affected. Talv, uh, Talv and Morham are fine. Okay. Take, take me there. What's happening here? So, uh, a tear in the fabric of reality opens, and it sounds a lot like somebody taking a stitch ripper and just, like, cutting a bunch of stitches all at once. Eesh. Um, And... Uh, the, normally, Hunger of Hadar is, is uh, tentacles. This is actually, like, um, the, like, front mandible from spiders appearing yeah. all over the ground. Um, and and a kind of a, a, an acidic web being spun uh, at the same time. It is uh, pitch black uh, in there. Cannot be illuminated by any light, mm -hmm. uh, magical or otherwise. 
Um, it is difficult terrain. Anybody who starts there takes uh, 2d6 cold damage. Any creature that ends their turn there must succeed on a dexterity saving throw or take uh, 2d6 damage. Uh, oh, sorry. I guess that was... Uh, All creatures within the area are fully blinded. Yep. Cool. Ah, uh, no, I did not mean to do that, sorry. Oh, but that's fine. Anything else? Uh, I think that's... Oh, and the bow is going to appear in her hand, and she's going to flick it, uh, and it crackles with energy. So. Yeah. Crackles with, with lighting energy as it br br uh, brills to life. Tall, the path to deck save is going to go up now. Uh, he's gonna come this way. He That's takes two d six damage. You're right. Cold, yeah. Go ahead and roll it. Okay. Wait. Oops, I'm sorry. learning how uh, this whole thing works. That's twelve. Ooh, that's twelve whole damage to him. Cold. Let me go ahead and mark that down. Uh, yeah, that's that's definitely a lot of damage to him. As he uh, he takes it. Uh, he is then going to come over here. Uh, place his hands here and cast a spell as you will see him well turn invisible what a bitch uh, that's his turn Draka's up next you see her uh, start to literally look she locks eyes with you Fane and it's gonna just start running her way up Spins the spear, lets loose the flail, so it starts working in a circle, and just charges at you. A scream on her lips. Before she gets to you, though, roll me insight real quick. Yeah. Not good. She seems entirely her usual self right now. Uh, she's gonna come at you with some uh, with some attacks if you're if you're not fully prepared for that, by the way. Uh, so. I'm, I was hoping you'd say that. So here those come, by the way. Uh, start off with her chain link mace she's going to come out with. Starting with that. Uh, here's the d20 for that. First one is a 18 to hit. That hits. Uh, what? Well, wrong damage roll. Uh, that is 7 plus 5 damage for 14. Sorry, no, that's not right. Uh, 12. 12 bludgeoning damage on the first one. Okay. Second, second attack comes in. That's a 14 plus 8. I'm assuming that also hits. Yep. That is uh, 13 bludgeoning damage. 8 plus 5. The last attack uh, comes from not her, uh, not her, uh, her, her, uh, her, not, not comes, not from the, uh, the mace, but instead comes from her spear. If I can find the right version of her character sheet, I'm so sorry. I thought I had it up. No, it's okay. I got it right here. That is a 8 plus 8 to hit. 16? 16. Yep. That hits. Oh, well. Here comes that. That is a 12 total. She rolls full damage there. I need you to make a strike save real quick. Ow. Uh, just a second. Ah, strength save. Yep. I'm known for those. It's a 13. 13 a fail. <clears throat> Bane. She comes at you, bats you with the mace, swings it around, bats you again with the backside. Your armor is still being mentioned to catch it. The spear comes up. She faints like she's going to stab at you. Instead, just drops low, sweeps your legs out from under you, spins it, and then pins it through part of your armor. You manage to move so it doesn't actually, like, go through anything important to you, but it does pin one of the lapels of your armor down to the ground. Until you pass that strength save, you are pinned. Or she picks her spear. Either case. However, she cannot pick use her spear right now, as she's currently pinning you to the ground with it. Uh, I don't want to do this to her, but I'm gonna... Do it. Uh, I'm gonna hellish rebuke her. Hellish rebuke? Hell, rebuke her hellishly. Uh, okay. <laughs> Going. Uh, Just make a deck saving throw, yeah? Yeah. Uh, yeah, a... that's a 15. She fails. Okay. Uh, she's gonna take 2d10 damage. Roll it. S15. 
<laughs> 15 damage. Uh, drops her down to... Wow. All right. Yeah, that she... Flames begin to lick at her armor. She starts to spin the mace to move the flames away. But you can see that it definitely starts to uh, leave some minor burns on her. Anything else for you? All right, it's her turn, actually. Never mind. Rio, you're up. All righty. Um... Rio will... Can we see the guys in this circle? Or are they hidden from us? They're blinded. It's dark in there, but you can still see them, I think. Mm -hmm. It's a cool. tear in the uh, universe, yeah. not like a uh, magical darkness. Mm -hmm. oh. Then I think, Rio, you have advantage on Amon if you want to get sneaky. Yeah. Um, I don't think I can reach him, at least not at the moment. Actually, I think I have to oh, do 30 feet of Don't walk into yeah, that circle. That's true. Um, you can walk to the edge of it, though. Do I need to get up to him for a sneak attack? Oh, uh, it's just any range. If he's blinded, if you have advantage. advantage. Yeah, you have advantage if he's blinded. Yeah. So if you have anything range, yeah. you can do that, too. Yeah, and I do have a fair bit of range. I I, you know, as a rogue, I should learn what sneak attack does. It's extra damage. Um, okay. It's it's like um, a it's couple 3D6 of six. It's 3d6 if you use a range of finesse weapon, and yeah. you have to have either advantage or an ally next to them. All right, so what you got? What you hitting with? Um, also, are you going to hit him? Yes. Uh, Rio is going to move uh, 15 feet, just casually walking with uh, his bow drawn mm -hmm. uh, with one of those, uh, those special arrows uh, he cooked up. Um, and loose one at Iman. Go ahead. Um, With advantage, I have roll twice. Yep. Yeah. That is a, and then, so it's a raw 16. You um, add your dex. And I think I had my dex. And your proficiency. Yeah. Uh, Which should be enough. If your proficiency is four, that puts you at 18. Yeah. Your dex is should be at least yeah. two, you're fine. You hit. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Uh, so that is one d eight piercing from the, from the bow by default. Another one d eight from your uh, from your from your from your special arrow. So two d eight damage total. And then five d six sneak attack. Yes. Yeah. Eight. So that's twelve. Uh, twelve, 12 from that initial damage. All right. Uh, and then a five d six. D six. Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna just use a. Uh, that's that's a lot of dice. That's uh, fine. Go for it. Five, two, six. Fifteen. It's dog water, but okay. Could be worse. Yeah, All right. Could be worse. It could be. Yeah. Anything so, else for you, Rio? Uh, that'll be it. He's just going to uh, be very uh, careful where he's like. He's he's gonna be looking for any signs of the dude who just like disappeared all right um but yeah lydia it's on you so thanks to the lovely power of true sight mm -hmm. where the fuck did the bishop go mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah. i just realized i you know what fine just pretend you can't see him he's still in that same spot right there same spot. What I mean, technically, doing? unless he took the hide action, we would know where he is. We just have disadvantage yeah. to like hit him. Yeah, he, he's right. Yeah, he, okay, yeah, that's fair. He's, he's still right there on the spot he is. What's he doing right now is prepping what looks like a brace of throwing knives. Okay. So. Personally, but... Well, when you have really long range spells, it's not that far. <laughs> not for a spellcaster, it ain't far. <laughs> yeah. So, I am going to. Well, Lydia is going to hold up her hand and, in a blue glow, a series of what looks like. Little meteors pop up and start orbiting around her. I'm casting most minute me meteors and going ahead and doing that at fifth level. Okay. So, 
Uh, how many is that? Many. That is, many that is a total of ten. That is a total of ten meteors. <laughs> Alrighty, ten meteors it is then. <laughs> many much meteors. A good number of meteors. How many meteor can Melf make materialize? I mean, uh, which, the way that works, when you cast a spell and as a bonus action on each of your turns thereafter, you can expend one or two of them to attack people. Well, and it's two d six fire damage. Then do the thing you just said you wanted to do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the thing. I'm gonna attack that There's invisible a... bishop. All right. <laughs> Uh, I'm assuming it's still an attack roll? I 100% thought you were about to say invisible bitch, and I was here for it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, well, you ignore his, his invisibility because you're true sight, so he doesn't have, doesn't have advantage for you, so go ahead and just roll. Oh, wait, is there even an attack roll for this? Uh, I do, I ah. believe. Hit it, then. Can we double check? I think I want a music change soon. Yeah, I didn't have to roll to cast the spell, but I do have to roll to the top. So. Do it. I'm gonna smack a dude with meteor. Yeah, that's 25's gonna hit. You can go ahead and roll damage. Now his AC is at least, at most, 24. <laughs> and greater than 8. Let me tell you, it's definitely not 25. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright, that's 10 damage from there. You gonna do it again? Uh. Sure. Hit him again. I'll smack him again. She doesn't wanna mess with him on yet. That's it. Um, yet again. Roll damage. Smack him. Minus 14. Yikes. Yeah, you hit him pretty good. Like, he definitely. You see part of his cloak catch fire, it's so immediately turn and start batting it out. As a, yeah. Did he drop I mean, concentration? Does that, Did I miss does that, that break the invisibility? <laughs> uh, he has to roll concentration for it. Which he's gonna <laughs> do right now. Yep, it breaks. <laughs> he is uh, very visible. And very on fire. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely very unhappy about that. As he, again, just like tucks and rolls to like put the fire out. But as he kind of finishes the roll, you can all recognize he's visible. <laughs> Anything else for you? Oh, there you are. Uh, no. At the end I of your turn. The, uh, I just used a sorcery point to make that subtle, so I didn't need to use components. Hell yeah, because you're fucking subtle and shit. So, at the end of your turn, let's do action. Iman uh, will break the spell that's, cur that's currently holding him, and then will move. So he, was, he still has to take the damage, obviously, but he has, he's no longer blinded. Hmm. Hey. Well, I mean, yeah, but you, you can roll damage for him if it, if it helps you feel better. It does. Hey, we still got one free sneak attack out of it. I'd say that sure it did. What's that damage looking like? As he will go right here next to oh, Airdrae. Oh, ow, Oof, four. four. As he takes the damage, walks out of it, like literally like walks out, like the, the webbing and things burning off this armor. He flexes a bit. Holy Flame dances across his form and burns the rest of the webs away. He comes forward towards you, Airdre, and brings his axe up. Mm -hmm. Face judgment, worm, and starts this way. Airdre does a... I uh, does a... 20 hit you. It does. Uh, here comes that damage. This is a swing with the axe, right? This isn't yeah. a magical effect? Nope. Uh, the axe is magical, so it does magical damage, but it's, it's not a... Not, a, not anything besides there. that. Uh, that's going to be 8 plus 7, uh, plus 3. So that's 15, 18. 16, 17, 18. 18 total damage, uh, 8 of which Oof. is radiant. Uh, he's also going to do it again. Mm. He misses that time. Uh, then I'm going to use a reaction and hit him back, because he's been analyzed. Adrian's having it. a hard time dodging him, but he's still doing it. You got it. So... Uh, 15 is not going to hit. Then I'm also going to spend a die and add a d6 to that. Go for it. Does a 19, 19 hit? Meets it, meets it, beats it. Aha. Uh -huh. Worth. All right. So yeah, uh, he punches him, and he's actually going to take an extra d4, because I forgot to add that on. You got it. 
uh, as I it? do dreadful strikes. Mm. Basically, just like the magic of his fist is a psychic attack. Yeesh. You are lancing pain directly into his mind as he is going to lash out with a third attack. Uh, this one is... As he lifts up the axe a third time, it glows with, with burning white flame. He points it, not at you, Airdre, over at Lydia, and fires off a burning bolt of bright red and white flame. Lydia does a 19 plus 8 hit you. Why are you asking? Because it's fun. Yes. However, I have this neat little trick I can do. Go ahead and do the, do the little trick. Go and do it. <laughs> this one cool trick that this the little head trick. of the Everlight Church hates. <laughs> <laughs> What's the trick? Uh, counter spell. Oh, well, it's uh, not a spell. It's well, not no, a spell. It is a rain spell attack, so go ahead. Wait, how does that it's work? Does that work? He's not casting a spell. It just stops. If it's casting a spell, items are a gray area. Yeah, it's. Yeah. You know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna allow it. <laughs> Would it uh, count he... as a third level or lower, or, or is it higher than? I'm that? gonna say third level. Just yeah, just say it counts as third level. Fuck it. Why not? You. <laughs> he it's... fires off this bolt of flame, Lydia, without you even moving. Just you look at it. It just fades either side of you. And uh, yeah, that's. That's old Eye's turn. Morahem's up next. He is going to move to Morahem. That's stupid. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me make sure how I know how the spell works got before I know. Munched. He did. He did. That did happen. What's the range on this? Uh, oh, perfect. It's got more than enough range. It's gonna come up to right here. Actually, he is going to lift up his hand. Over at Amon, may the Everlight bless your strikes, my lord. And he will cast Shield of Faith on Amon. Uh, secondly, with his actual action, he is going to uh, do a thing. Uh, he will reach out a hand forward, throw out his uh, his hand at Liddy, uh, sorry, at Fane. I almost did it, but I fixed it before I did it. And he will cast Guiding Bolt. Uh, here's comes the spell attack. That is a 19 plus. Uh, three for a 20, uh, 22 to hit you. Uh, guiding bolt. It hits. It I hits. Just, I'm, just, I'm just making sure. Look, you might have some fucking warlock shit to fucking boost what, up the AC. What kind of damage does it do? Let me see. Uh, radiant. Motherfuck. <laughs> That's for a 46 for a good total of 14 radiant damage. Uh, also, the next strike against the next strike against you uh, before the end of his turn has advantage. It's your turn. It's actually, it's my turn. We didn't. It's serious turn because you got deleted, right? <laughs> Let me fix that. All right, Airdre, do the things. So uh, I think Airdre facing Amon uh, still doesn't draw his sword just because I like don't have the time to do that. He reaches in his pouch and he has several of these like herbal pouches that. You can either chew on or like patch your body up. He just shoved one in his mouth. Uh, the way it works, I do have to make a medicine check uh, to be able to do it as an action. So we'll see if he picks the right pouch, I guess. Yeah, he gets it. You got it. Only four. Okay, well. Every little bit helps. And, uh,. Yeah, uh, Airtrace going to basically just circle walk around Amon, and as much as he looks like he's about to attack him, uh, I'm going to cast a uh, Thorn Whip at uh, our bishop here who's concentrating on Shield of Faith. Or, I assume. Is it a concentration? I don't know. It's not. It doesn't matter. I'm pretty sure. Uh, well, I don't know if the 13 hits. Oh, well. Uh, it does not. Yep. Yeah, it looks cool, like a thorn just a, like, band of thorns comes out of his uh, bracer that I think probably uses rosewood in it as, like, the druidic focus and uh, doesn't get him, unfortunately. Also, I was wrong. Uh, Shield of Faith is concentration. 
Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, Guiding Bolt isn't, I'm pretty sure. Mm hmm. Like, well. Anything else for you, Air Trey? That's all I got. That's all the actions. Draka's up in her, in, up as you are currently, Ping, you are still currently uh, pinned down under Draka's spear. She is staring over you. Faye, you've gotten a pretty good read on Draka. You know she's a woman who loves her battle. She loves to fight. You'd expect joy on her face. There's not. Just kind of focus. Like she's deliberately trying to not think about how she feels right now. Since I've dropped below half health, um, I, like, after a scream of agony from the Guiding Bolt, uh, Bane coughs up blood uh, and looks at Draka and says, If you're gonna kill me, kill me for you. Don't fucking do it for him. And I will try to tear my uh, self away from this spear. Do so at advantage. As you say that to her, she flinches. Uh, Bob. Bob. That's enough. Seventeen. Hey. Oh, no, yeah. So I'm even feeling the money flavor in this. I think you're saying that as you're pulling. Like, if you're gonna kill me, do it for you. First pull, no luck. Don't do it for him. And that shakes her enough that your second pull, you just shove her back and, sh and you are and, and, and you back up. You're up now. I take off into the air, motherfuckers. Bye, see you later. Uh, uh, she's, uh, she's, gonna op she's gonna op attack you, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what, fuck it. If, as soon as I'm up there, I'm a lot safer than I am down here. She rolled the three anyway. Oh, thank God. It's not in her heart. Uh, hey, uh, Air Airdre, I'm really sorry. I think this is probably going to hit and hurt you. That depends oh. if it's a deck save, then maybe not. Uh, uh, maybe not. Um, hey, let's see. What's up, baby? Actually... No, we'll just do this normal. So I activated Stormbow last turn, which takes a charge off of it. Uh, I am shooting uh, mean Mr. Magoo over here. <laughs> Which one? Yeah. Oh, Sorry, you may have to me... clarify. Okay. Oh, bald dude. Okay. <laughs> dude. Sure, go it's, ahead. It's, it's, the, it's the big nasty one. You uh, got it. So... Mr. Cleaner over there. <laughs> Okay. Uh, uh, twelve a to 12 hit. Plus nine. A twelve does not hit, unfortunately. What the? You have, you have plus twos. You have two plus twos. You think it's uh, gonna work? Uh, that hits. So it hits. That okay. hits. This says four piercing, but that's actually not what happens. Uh, uh huh. He's going to take instead. Four uh, D eight damage. Ouch. From the uh, lightning. Um, hey, Airdre, quick, make a dexterity save. Oh, is that within range? Oh. Yeah, anything yeah. within 10 feet of him. You're good. Yeah, 23. Okay, great. Yeah, uh, no, uh, con check. Oof. Each creature within 10 feet of the target. Hey, is, uh, is the target within 10 feet of the target? Is that reflexive? Uh, I mean, he does take the damage, yeah. Okay, so I... No, wait, no, no, no. It's 48 for him and then 28 for anybody near him. Yeah. Uh, wow, man. A 15. Uh, I really wish I could have pulled him in. I, w I wish I would have hit him and pulled him in. I also I'll forgot that I had this. Uh, okay. Does his concentration get affected by that? Yeah, uh, he, it, he, it did, but he rolled in 20, and that 20 did. What a jerk. Sorry. Uh, no, I'm going to shoot him again, this time the regular way. You got it. Uh, eight, eight, that's hit. Uh, that's eight piercing and rolling a d4, because Airdre actually took me that nifty uh, psychic damage thing. Look at that. Part of the really exciting bit. 
Drops to 80. He must make another constitution concentration save. Which he 19's on. What a dick. He has Wait. faith in his lord, alright? He's gotta keep him alive. Uh and then I guess with that, I'm going to uh, Hunter's Mark him. You got it. He is Hunter's Marks. Okay. We move over to Tolv, who will move, move up to uh, here, kind of start flanking around, kind of making some weird bobbing and weeping patterns. And then it's going to, you see him draw a set of knives from his coat and fling them out at you, Rio. That is a uh, 18 plus... Jesus. What's, what's this number? Uh... Yeah, no, that, that, that hits. 18 plus 8 is going to be a hit, I'm assuming. Yeah. Okay, uh, damage. Strangely. <laughs> Strangely uh, enough. That's only 5 slashing damage. I do need a con boat. I do need a con save from you, though. Okay. Uh, you can also uh, uncanny dodge to reduce whatever this damage is in half, depending. Yes. On. Yes, I can. Uh, uncanny dodge. Well, uh, no, there will be no damage okay. from the saving throw. Hmm? The saving throw doesn't oh. one foot three damage. Okay. Uh, just con save real quick for me. Yeah, uh, that... Con save? Yes. So that is a... 16. You're good. Cool. Uh, he is then going to fling out more air, uh, more, uh, throwing knives. These ones over at air drip. He I see. crits. Except... Except, uh, how much damage is he gonna do, I guess? I gotta roll it first. Here comes the slashing first. Uh, seven plus six is... 13 plus one is 14, so 14. 14 slashing. I'm oh, sorry, piercing. Because, uh, Shirtray is a very fast boy, and he's gonna try and not get hit by that. How much damage was it? 14. Then Airdray catches the knife. And his reaction is going to throw it back at him. Fair enough. Uh, I still need you to make the contact, I... though. Really? It doesn't technically hit if I stop all the damage. Uh, okay, well, then that's that fair enough. Uh, 16 does not hit him, though. Uh, oh, well, no, I am. I'm going to spend a die on this. This fair guy enough. can get fucked. That hits him. Uh, he's going to take his... <laughs> yeah, he will uh, take his own damage, I suppose. Let me... Oh, it's just the six piercing I do, but he oh, possibly has to make a con save. I will roll his yeah. own con save. He... Uh, oh, no, he also... It? He fails it. He is poisoned. Uh, he also takes an extra four because Airdre makes every attack he does terrifying. All right, well, <laughs> that's a grand total of minus ten. Only once per turn per creature, but, you know. All right, let's keep it moving. Draka's up next. Uh... She is still squaring off, or, or she's not squaring off because you faint and you've taken off into the air. Uh, recognizing that can no longer be a thing. Uh, she turns and she uh, turns to Lydia, actually. Uh, Lydia, you've seen Draka stare at you a few times. It's been all out rage every time she's looked at you in your direction generally. It's not this time. There's a definite frown on her face, but not an actual... Uh, not an actual, you know, like, uh, not like, not like one of, of actual malice. As she narrows in on you, starts walking up towards you, and you could just hear her say, I wish I could hate you. And then she will come forward and try to attack you. That's first one's gonna miss real hard. Second one is not gonna miss real hard, as that's a. 21. Also, I have the wrong music on. Excuse me. What type of attack is this? What type of damage? Melee. It's a uh, blood, uh, melee bludgeoning. So I met oh, the way fine. that hit. It does connect. Oh. There we go. Is she using the spear or the mace? The mace right now. So you see the mace. Swing and collide with Lydia's side, and even though it digs deep, and you can see the blood start to kind of pool, 
It does not phase her. If she does not react, there is no pain. That is me saying she is immune to bludgeoning damage. Uh, yep. <laughs> I mean, no way she could know that. She... Sell it. Looks, Sell it. She looks at Draka and... says it's rarely easy to just flat out hate someone even when you're at odds with them i share the same feelings looking at you and looking at him draka you do not have to be in this fight It's becoming clearer and clearer that you don't want to. Uh, to simplify this turn, she's going to make the rest of her uh, of her turns uh, hitting you again. But since you're immune to legending, it won't matter. Uh, as she just appears frustrated with you, just shut up and starts swinging that mace at you. Shut up! Shut up! Trying very hard to get you to just stop talking to her. Uh, that's gonna end her turn, though. Which means I think we're over to Rio. Alrighty. Um, Rio will kind of like, like take uh take note of just like, oh, that motherfucker just threw knives at me. He'll uh he'll load another uh ex one of those explosive arrows and just be like, well that was fucking rude, and uh fire right back at him. All right, you um, can uh, as a bonus action if you don't move this turn, get advantage of this with aim. Yep. Yeah, I mean he ain't gonna move because he's got, he's got a, uh, like a position for firing at anyone. I do the thing. So that, I am very dumb. Okay, so that is an, I believe that's an 18 to attack. It's yes. Uh, and then... if you have advantage, roll both just in case you get a crit. You yeah, roll both. I saw. Oh, okay. And, uh, that is, let's see, 1d8 one, one D plus 1 more d8 plus your 5d6. Okay, what, uh, is it 1d8 for the, uh, for the bow itself? Yes. 1d8 okay. for the bow itself, 1d8 for the explosion, and then 5d6 for your sneak attack. So that is a 7... Plus two for the for the bow. Mm -hmm. One d eight minus nine. A six minus six um, more. Now we're five d six. Also, what's your dex? You should probably be adding that to the damage. Oh, add that to the damage. Uh, yeah. So add. Your dex bonus. Okay, so plus two. Is that per die? Oh, then you already had, had no. your plus two, yeah. No, then go ahead and roll your... Yeah, you added the plus two already. You, you rolled low damage. Yeah. No, he didn't. Okay, the yeah, D8 yeah. that landed two. Uh, the D8, you said yeah. you rolled a seven, and I, I took away nine. Yeah. Oh, you, if you already had calculated, then we're yeah. fine. All right, so roll your five to six, yeah. please. Total number. I was not writing them down. I don't no! Know. Hang on. Uh, so <laughs> it was 2, 2, 5, 6. 2, 2, 5, 6. That's 12. I'm thinking the 18 I roll because it's better. All right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> like, so just, it takes 18 damage. Just <laughs> Cool. All right. He's not looking great, honestly. As the explosion hits him, he rocks back and throw and that's throw off the cloak. You can now see he does have a layer of kind of like leather with plated armor around on him. Mm. Uh, cool. Anything else for you, uh, Rio? Can I get a can I get a vibe check of just like, are you above a hundred hit points? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. No, no, as in he's not. Not no, you can't have. That okay, check. cool. Lydia, cool. it's on you. So after being basically made into a striking dummy, um, <laughs> that did happen. 
that's that's basically the role she's in right now. Um, that spell attack that Amon lashed out with earlier, what type of magic was it? Like, was it radiant fire? Yes, radi it's radiant. Okay. Uh, so for this... She's still got the meteorites hovering around her, but you watch as she actually reaches up to her armor and plucks one of those stars off of the cloak and tosses it high and much like the meteors, um, shining silvery blue darts, seven of them materialize. Around the stars? And Almost instantly, they disperse. One, two, huh? We're not crown of stars. It's a rope of stars. Oh fuck! Even cooler. Mm. Which it's effectively casting casting magic missile at fifth level. Mm -hmm. So Damn. she raises that up. The darts go flying and they are split amongst each of them with everyone taking at least one. Mm -hmm. Draka specifically has one and then Iman and the other two bishops are taking two. All right then, do it. So. Let's do see. Draka first, get that out of the way. Pull up the thing. Sorry. You got it. Take uh, it up. 1d4 plus 1 per dart. 1d4 plus 1 per dart. Yeah, these still got a spell attack, though, right? Or no, they just hit. No, they just hits. There That's you go. The Never mind. just hits because I didn't have to. You're right. If One someone's here. focusing on something, this is the meanest thing to do. It's like roll 10 concentration saves. Yeah, true. That one's Straka. It's four. All right, and then two at each of everybody else. Let's do them on. Oh no! Oof, he takes nine! God! Let's do more of him next. Six! Also, I heard an oh no there. Is that is that concern? <laughs> uh, concern for the six. Six again. Minus six. I mean, uh, probably, those actually probably have probably plus two because it's 1d4 plus one per dart. Oh, um, so yeah, per dart. So. Oh, fair enough. Seven so, for each of those. So another one? All right, cool. Yeah. Uh, Tall, not looking great, honestly. Uh, anything else for you? Uh, I do have a bonus action with those meteors. You're right. Meteor it up. She's flinging shit all over the you fucking battlefield. <laughs> fuck you. Fuck you. You just random bullshit. Go. <laughs> just tosses the star up and snaps Whatever. her fingers, and everything just fucking goes flying. I love it. I love this. It's fucking badass. Uh, we'll throw one like a meteor. fucking fighting game. It'd be a dope ass move set. <laughs> one meteor at Tal, like, and one at um... fighting her is like a bullet hell. Yeah, legit. Like, she's like she's like a, like she's she's super controller. It's like back in the field the whole time. Pew 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 pew. Fucking can't approach. She's, she's fucking cigar dropping a fireball <laughs> high and then low. <laughs> Every half a second. All right, fuck him up. These two lads. Fuck him up. Give me, give One. me, give me rolls. Fuck him up. Low high and fireball. Let's go. Uh, thirteen. Although you have to do a attack yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta roll first. So let's go. We'll say the first one to 13 is for Tall. Go ahead and roll attack for him. Okay. Unless it's a save, but I thought it was an attack. It is an attack. I'm just dumb. You, no, you're not. You're amazing. It hits anyway. You, you, were just so, you were just so sure of your damage that you knew. <laughs> All right. Now more of him. We'll, have, we'll, we'll put the 10 on him. No, one more attack roll. 13 is not going to hit. So yeah, Morahem managed to like flash it away with a wave of holy magic. Tal, however, is too busy dodging out from Rio's explosive arrows. And as he looks, another meteor just strikes straight through him. He like keeps backing up. You see him quickly. I mean, you wouldn't see him, but the camera quickly cuts over to him. He looks over and notices there's like a small hole in his side. He just puts his hand over it, draws a knife, stays in. Anything else for you? Uh, 
This... What is the shield of faith that's on him on right now? Uh, he gets plus two AC. Is that still being cast? Oh, didn't he yeah. drop it? Nope. Oh, it is. Okay. Oh, I, I, should, I should count check. You're right. Uh, what was the damage he took? Uh, uh he, he took, took two attacks. Uh, he took and it was not a lot. From the dark. From the dark. Uh, he rolled an 18 on the first check. His con save is plus two. Ten, not... mm -hmm. Uh, so I think that's cool. The second one, he fucks up on. It's dropped. That's why Magic Missile is great. It's too tough. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Well, that means Amon's up next. Uh, he's still got a target. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Before moving on, can I get with True Sight involved and kind of knowing what to look for? What's going on with the Dying Flame? Is it's... it being channeled right now or is it dormant? It's dormant right now. Like, it's, it, it boils up whenever Iman's emotions are high, so it's definitely boiling right now as he's fighting all of you. He is not channeling it, though. At least, not directly. Secondary question. Go. So, we rolled for our power die mm -hmm. earlier. Mm -hmm. those, the powers on our domain sheet, are those accessible at any time? They sure fucking are. And as far as what's being brought forth. Are you the one that decides that? Am I ever the one who decides those things, darling? <laughs> I just want to say that I know what you're going for, and I, and I, and I, and I think I want it. I think I really want it. I think I really want it, and I think I want you to do it. It's up to you, obviously, but I think I know what you're about to do, and I think I want you to do it. I think that I want to bait this shit out. All right. And we're going to invoke voices of the past. All right. This is due time for a music change. I want you to. God. Oh, no. no. Wait. Uh huh. <laughs> Lydia? <laughs> we're going to drop the battle audio. We're going to drop it all. I'm going to give you some music. Take us there. So, in the reign of fire of everything that happening as spells are being thrown and both sides are for forced to some defensive, her and Iman lock eyes and she... a sad smile or not a smile, a sad frown and says, I'm sorry, I know this is going to cause you great pain but I need to see that thing that's latched onto you so that I can get rid of it and Raising her hand, around her blue and dark energy swirls and manifests as, because they're smaller, I'm going to say two if you're cool with that. Um, And these shapes amass and take the form of the souls of two children given light by a glow that emits from her chest and enters each of them. These are... Iman's children brought to light. Iman, who, who was clearly preparing to strike an Airdre, stops 
the moment she begins to speak, he turns as she starts to tell to say, like, I'm sorry. And he says, you wouldn't. And as she goes on, the chest, the light or just lights up and he's just like, stop. Please. And before long, as the two figures of his children manifest in front of him, Iman looks down at the two of them, faces one, Alma, and the other, little Kale. He falls to both of his knees as the two of their figures illuminate and enter the battlefield directly in front of you. Anything else for your turn, Lydia? They get to act. Oh, they you're right. You're sure right. They need some tokens, I get. All right, let me do that, because I thought I was prepared for this, and I wasn't. That's my fault. So I'm actually going to... Because mm -hmm. I think that you would have an idea more on what you would want to see happen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because she is technically empowering them with their own souls. Mm -hmm. Why don't you take control? Oh, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Um. Yeah, I can. I can do that. Okay, I can. I can do that. Okay. Um. Give me like 10 seconds to figure some shit out. I'm working on it. I just need a moment. I just need a moment. Uh, again, I thought I had some tokens for these guys. Turns out I don't, and that's unfortunate. But we're going to make it work as... I think the first thing that happens is... Actually, you know what? I know exactly what happens. These two ghostly figures once again become just wisps, just gatherings of light. And as Amon falls and hits his knees, they flash forward and both lance directly into his chest. The energies immediately suffusing themselves directly into him. We move to Amon's turn, and you all watch as he is perfectly still and quiet. Like he's speaking to someone in his head. What does that energy look like now? It's, at least for the moment, growing more dim. Something is pushing down on it. I'll even let you roll insight to see if you can tell what's pushing down on that force. I or Arcana, either one. Love. To do some arcana because I'm significantly better at that. Go on with it then. And we'll throw in that plus two from chat. Do it. <laughs> it's not like you needed it. Uh, <laughs> what's a, no what's a 25? Wow. Um, it's not Alma and Kale pushing down on that dark presence inside Amon. It's Amon. You can physically feel an incredibly familiar feeling like the man you've spent so much time around, like his essence, like his soul itself, trying his hardest to just push down on this dark energy you can still feel welling within him. And as his turn goes, it's going real well right now. And I think we're going to go ahead. Mm -hmm. go ahead I'm please. sorry, I'm going to no, ask please. more questions. <laughs> oh, do it, as I'm bringing the music back on. Studying it. Can I discern if there's a way to extract it from him? 
Hmm, with that 25, yes. With enough time and no distractions, yes. You think you can pull it out of him. It will kill him, though. Versus if we kill him, it could reach out and lash on, latch on to someone else. If you kill... In fact, I'll even tell you with 25. If you kill him, that presence will likely be... If you kill him, at this point, the presence has been bound to him for so long that if you just kill him and nothing else happens for a long enough time, the presence will just die. It will remain bound to his fleeting soul and just die off in time. And or you could tear it out and do something else with it. Whereas you could tear it out and contain it, do something else with it, or maybe even purge it somehow or convert it into something else. Also means no one else gets their hands on it. But doing so kills him. If you're thinking, is there a way to do this and keep him alive? That might be an additional role. As let's bring our battle sounds back in. Would you want me to roll that now or later? Roll it. I won't tell you the results yet, just yet, though. Okay. Iman doesn't take a turn. He just sits there, clearly battling with himself still. Morahem goes up next. My lord! And with a bonus action, will once again throw up Shield of Faith on him. Uh, he will also take a few steps back to here. And mm -hmm. will... How will he do this? He's actually just going to uh, raise up and throw another guiding bolt as he brings up his hand, gathering up in light, and flings it off over at Rio. Does a... I don't think it's that... Yeah, it's the bonus at that high. Rio, does a 13 hit you? <laughs> no, it does okay, not. Okay, you're good then. Uh, that ends Morahem's turn. Airdre, we're back to you. Uh, I'll roll inside if you want, or like use something, but is he... Is, is he going to do an opportunity attack, or is he pretty much in his own world at this point? Insight. All right, I'm very good at this. The, the, yeah. He's not moving. Uh, there we go. I was going to say, I think I technically have advantage, because the last time I saw him, I made him my favorite enemy, but I haven't changed it since then. But I don't know that that matters. Anyways. No. Yeah, no. He, uh, yeah, no, he's not moving. Mm. Then do this. All right. Uh, Airdre is just going to uh, run over to our uh, Bishop of Eyes. Go and for it. I just. I have not had a chance to draw the sword yet. Well, it's still not going to happen unless this goes well. Uh. Yeah, I'm going to uh, use a, another key point and try and flurry of blows this guy. 18 hits. An 18 hit. And an additional 1d4. Minus 7. Minus 2. Is he still standing? Uh, he's still standing. Uh, again, I get to learn any resistances or immunities. Uh, he is immune to the blinded condition. He has resistance to poison. Mm. Okay. Well, that's probably why he didn't go down from his own thing. Uh, this is the question I have. All right, uh, I'm going to interrupt my flurry of blows with an action, and I'm going to try and uh, do the vine attack thing. What's it called? The whip of uh, thorn of whips. Uh, thorn of whips. 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 Thorn even if it's a one, if I can boost this up to a hit, will we count it as a hit? I want to know uh, your rule take on that. I'm sorry. What are you looking for? If you can boost up to it, I'll count it. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, then I'm going to use both plus twos I have. Okay. That's eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It's close. And then uh, I'm going to spend a key point to increase it by two with uh, focused aim. Fourteen. And then I'm going to roll a one d6. I'm using all the resources to hit this man. You got it. That man, Stop. get his ass. 
That's it. So I just imagine Airtrain like pauses for this moment and you can see like energy coming off of him. He's like, I am going to hit you. And uh, he takes the nine piercing and he gets moved uh, 10 feet next to me. So probably here. Uh, sorry, what happens? More time? Yeah, uh, he gets moved oh, here. Okay, cool. Yeah. Oh. As he gets pulled towards me, and I'm gonna hit him with the other flurry of blows punch. That is a 15 is not a hit. Uh, I'm gonna spend another point to increase that by two. I right. have no more key points. I have one key point left now. That is that is a hit. It does 10. He is starting to also not look very good. And he's also analyzed, so yeah, I get both of them with that. All right, uh, he does not have any, any immunity or resistances. Mm -hmm. And then to Rio, like, take out one of them, please. Oh, Rio, Rio's, right. Rio's like, why are you going for him? Go for the other, oh, I see. <laughs> All right. Uh, Fane, yeah, I think that's the most I could do. Uh, okay, um, yes, sir, God. How much how much time will you give me to talk to Draka if I still make an attack? Uh how much time do you want? Cool. Uh yeah, I'm gonna uh, click a bonus action uh to uh, charge up my uh storm bow. Uh, I'm firing it at uh this guy. Yeah. Uh sorry again, Airdre. Um, I really hope I roll well. <laughs> me too. <laughs> oh no. Does that mean the other guy's in range too? <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Okay. A little bit... Air Dre decided to make himself a fucking Oreo. Uh, that's a twenty-seven to hit. So that's a hit. He's he's gonna Damn. get fucked. He sure uh, is. That man takes. Uh, I think I just activated that. 21 damage. Yeah, you sure did. And he failed that deck save real bad. Uh, th this What's guy this failed thing? the deck save? Uh, yeah, he did. Okay, so he's going to take uh, 2d8, uh, yeah, yeah. which I will roll. Airdre, roll well. I rolled a 17. You nailed it. Uh, so that's 15 oh. damage uh, to our, oh. our good friend. Uh, uh, Toph gets shocked with lightning. And uh, uh, gets get shocked with lightning and definitely appears like he needs to start backing away. Sees Airdre flanking him, and you can see him even through the mask. Airdre, you can see him close enough. His eyes are darting around like he's looking for a way out at this point. I got gotcha. you. Uh, Don't worry, I'll give him a way out. Oh, oh this damn. guy is he still looking healthy? Uh, how you do what? Uh, uh, who? Join uh, more him. Or him. He's hurt pretty bad. Definitely bloody. Okay. Uh, I'll fire off that second shot because I get two attacks anyway. Do it. Uh, regular. 18's a hit. All right. Uh, it's five piercing. And actually, both of them are going to take an additional D4. Uh, You're right. From Roll from it. My fancy, I my fancy magic. Roll it. Three. Minus two. Minus one. All right. Um, I swoop down uh, next to Draka, uh, and I say, or, or I think I start by saying to Lydia, uh, "Will we be able to sever it?" Uh, I think even the flavor is a little bit better, as, by the way, you're being you didn't know, uh, Like, you come down, Draka immediately comes at you, you bring your nice big bird foot up, kick at her vampires hard enough to, like, send her skidding back a bit, give you two a quick moment to kind of, like, have this quick back and forth without her hearing it. Um, it's, it's okay if she hears it. I want her oh. to hear it. Fair enough. But I then do she's... want the space from her attack. Well, okay, there you go. So, this, yeah, so then that. I believe that I can remove it from him without killing him. I just need the time and no distraction. Uh, 
looking at Draga, I can make sure that he lives. Uh, I turn to Draka. D remind me, have we told Draka that he's he's got this thing attached to him? Uh, you have not. Okay. Uh, and what I'm going to do is uh, reach out with both hands as she kind of charges back and like grab her and say, I need you to listen to me. He's... He's magically sick. Something happened to him a long time ago, and the last shard of a broken, dying god, demon, it lodged itself in him. I trust Lydia when she says she can remove it. But, and I, I look at Lydia and I kind of tilt my head. I don't think it's without risk. If you care for him, no, he is in great pain. And if we can prevent him suffering, we will. We just need a clear path to do it. She comes up like she wants to attack you again, freezes and just, I, I do not know what I feel for him anymore. And then I'm gonna, like, grab her by the cheek and say, then what do you feel for me? Hey, Fane. You are consensus of smooching? Yeah! Cool, she smooches him. Hard as fuck. Let's go! <laughs> yeah. Drops the mace, grips, like, the collar of your armor, your warrior, warrior. pulls you straight in. And, yeah, Lydia, you're watching as uh, the Bishop of Iron and your High Emissary are Frenching right now in the middle of hey. battle. I'm not uh, being used as a blunder thing. So, you know. <laughs> no, keep her distracted. <laughs> Uh, there is a hole on Fane's, uh, like, uh, what's the cross one Gosh. called? Bandolier? Bandolier, where she has some of her knives. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a hole, and she reaches down to her boot. Uh, not her boot, I guess her, like, knee. And she pulls a knife that is unadorned. We'll need this later. And she tucks yeah. it into Draka's belt. He lets go of the kiss and is kind of just standing there, maybe just as stunned as Amon is right now. Kind of just seems a little out of it. Like, she's just not 100% sure on what to do right now. With that, we'll move to Talv, who is just going to draw twin daggers and go at you, Airdre. He, he better not miss. It'll I... be his problem if he misses. All right, here's the first one. Uh, that is in uh, 19 to hit. Oh, uh, yeah, it's going to hit. It beats it by one. On save for me, please. You take six slashing wait, damage. Wait, hang on. Foxy was given uh, negative ones, I believe. You're right. So then, uh, it's, so then it's 18 to hit. Well, did he have more than one minus one? I um, do. I have exactly two minus ones. Yeah. Sorry, can I deal a little bit of extra damage? I forgot about Hunter's Merc on uh, what's his butt. Oh, on Morham, yes. Boop. Go ahead. Boop. Mm. I hit him. Anyways, twice. if it's 17, it does not hit. He took 11 additional damage. All right, in that case, I will take the 17 and it consumes both of my both of my minus ones. So I will now uh -huh. take uh, have the second attack go. That is well, a. Well, first, mm -hmm. him as a reaction, gonna punch him. It keeps on rolling with advantage. Go. Uh, but uh, I'm also going to roll 1d6 to see if I can get that 11 up high enough. No. 14 is not high uh, enough. It's only 14. No? Nope. All right. Uh, he also rolls uh, a... Is that? He rolls a 21 to hit you that time. Uh, yeah, he's going to hit me that time. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, would a 16 what? hit? Because 
Michelle gave a plus two just a minute ago. 16 oh. would be too short still. Ah. Uh, you also, okay. have you not used your other plus two? Oh, I did to hit, uh, uh yeah. I yeah, did to hit uh, Baldur. Gotcha. Uh, hit Baldur. I'm gonna hit this man. Listen, there is a floating one in the party. There's a floating one in the party. I don't know if it's gonna help you for anything. No, I'm gonna uh, save that for my next turn. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I still have my two. In that case, I am going to. Him. So yeah, he. So he's gonna. He, he hit you with his sack. Here comes his damage. Finally. Uh, that's nine slashing. Can you please con save for me now? I did not make that con save. Oh, then you're gonna take an additional amount of damage equal to uh, 3d10 poison. Right. Oh no. 3d10 poison? Yeah. Wow. He uses Drake Bane. That's 10 there, and another 10 there for 20. Yeah, I'm unconscious. Oh, Airdre, you are oh, bit God. with. Airdre, you, you step back out of the way of a slash that barely nicks you. You think you're fine, and so you feel, start feeling the poison act in immediately. Airdre, you've dealt with poison. Your elf body handles them very well. This one begins setting in immediately. You step back from that first dice. Second one gets you nice and good across the shoulder, though. Digs in, and he pulls out. Uh, you just spray a blood out of, your, out of your shoulder, and then the poison kicks in, and you fall over, numb and unconscious. Uh, that's his turn, though. Draka's up, and does she act? Draka is holding her action. For what? We'll see. Rio, it's on you. Alrighty, Rio hey, hey, is hey. going to. Oh okay. god, but. Uh, uh, just as a reminder, uh, we can summon voices of the past, um, and uh, we can summon a celestial as a part of that, and a coatl. Uh, can cast cure wounds. That's true. Just saying. It's not. It's not a bad thing. It can thing. also be used at any point. So I mean, yeah. you can no, say you that you can saw Airdre go down and. Yep. Yeah. Oh. Uh. Yeah. Rio, upon seeing Airdre drop, um, will already have like been like noticing of just like how bad uh, Talav is just kind of like stow his short sword for uh not his short sword his uh short bow and pull out his uh his special knife this one has a um a almost trailing green glow behind the tip and just run at talev and almost like knee tackle as he slashes at him give me an attack um that is and 18. 18 is going to hit. Yeah. Uh, and so that'll be a, uh, let's see, a 1d4 plus 2. So that'll be a 6 uh, slashing damage. And go ahead and roll me a, uh, a raw DC 14 uh, for for Talev. Uh, what's the save he's looking for? A DC kind of 14. What kind of save? Uh, just raw. What kind of save? Oh, just, just a straight up percent, a flat D20? Just straight up DC oh, 14. Well, over 13. Yeah. So, um, as he gets uh, hit, probably like in the neck, um, there is no blood that comes from this blow as he kind of like stumbles back, grasping at his neck, and he is no longer able to breathe. Ah, his friend. veins. Encroaching. Yes. Yeah. Careful on neck things, ah. if you don't mind. Yeah, sorry. Um, his veins will turn just bright green, gray, as his skin just grays out, like as if he was just like not exposed to any sun. Mm. And he he's like, pan like on his face, it is pure panic, and he will just fall. What's happening? Die. Is it just die? Does it do extra damage? Yeah just instantly die oh well we're dagger kill yeah there you go yeah like it is <laughs> power dagger just uh yeah since he's not at above 100 uh hp and so oh i should probably move uh rio right there um and uh i don't know if i get a bonus attack or anything i don't think like so. you're whipping two weapons at once Okay, well, my idea was to just throw the dagger right at a, 
at bald baldy over there. Um. Yeah. Uh, let's see if I can just. More. That's not what I want to do. More him. Um. But. There we are. You could also summon that angel. Could do that. Can I summon an angel? I don't. It's, you sure don't think can, can with the yeah. power of love. Just kidding. <laughs> the power of voices of the past. Yeah, that with with that specifically, okay. you can in fact summon an angel. Okay. Yes. Cool. Um. Yeah. Uh, I'll just copy and paste that. Uh. What I have uh, for. Um. Yeah, I just sent Foxy the the details of that item. Um. I don't know how voices of the past work. Uh, do you want me to just make the call for you? Sure. Okay, so what you would do is you would summon a Kawaddle. Uh, it summons on your turn. It doesn't take an action as far as I can tell. Um, you decide where it drops within 30 feet of you and you control its actions. Uh, Kawaddles happen to know the Cure Wounds spell. And greater restoration, should we need that. All right. Well, there okay. you go. We can so, say it yeah. occupies the same uh, space as Airdrae, too. It just, like, yeah, lands I'm fine on him. That. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's easier for me. Yeah. Also, he's supposed to roll, you're supposed to roll a stealth roll over, over his perception, Chalice. That was the whole, I don't know if you read the what? whole thing. There was a roll you had to, what you're supposed to do there where you're supposed to roll over a thing for him. I'm not going to worry about it for now because it's not important. <laughs> Listen, I am god awful at taking hints. It's fine. You're it's it's your own item! Read your items! <laughs> it's oh, okay. Is it, it's a, is it stealth? It's I don't know. You have to roll a stealth roll over his perception in order to do it. Which, Let's move on. It's fine, don't worry about it. It's fine. Okay? It's okay. Moving well, on with our lives. Stabs. It's fine, don't worry about it, it's not important. Uh okay, he's dead. Anything else from you? Or you summon the thing, right? Uh, yeah, I'll summon the little, the little collateral thing. Okay, cool. Well, so, that gets to act now, yeah? Yep. Cool, yeah. I'm assuming it's gonna cast Cure Wounds on Airdre. Hey. Yes. Cool. Uh, is that... There you go. Ten. Yield for ten. Get on up, big guy! <laughs> and then I think we go if... on... to yeah, Lydia? I don't know what form they take. Um... They're uh, snaky friends. Uh, or oh, of jokers. Lydia, before you take your action, something will happen. As we step ourselves briefly inside the head of the Crusader Lord, uh, he is surrounded by his children who are conversing with him, wondering what's happened, the battles he's won since then. He is happy in this moment. And then they ask about the bodies. They ask how many people he's had to put behind him, how many families he's had to sever, how many children he's had to burn to get to this point. And it all settles in for him. The monster he's made himself. And he thinks to himself, what else is there for me to do? If I've been containing this for so long, but the real horror was what was in me all along, I suppose it's best I just let go. And just before your turn, Lydia, you watch as that kind of bit of crimson fire that was still licking and lit all around Amon's armor goes black and begins to flare up all around him as he gets up eyes pure white no pupil and just yells activating his legendary action crusader lord's agony uh it's still your turn though lydia so you see him flaring in anger and yelling surrounded by black flame you've known the results of your analysis it's your turn Looking at him is Iman gone. 
No. He's losing that fight with whatever was inside of him. But he's not giving up just yet. He has two people in there fighting with him. and then over at Rio RJ and the last standing bishop and says if I'm going to do something about this I have to act now or we risk losing him entirely uh Thane says, tell me what you need me to do, otherwise I trust you fully. I think actually even, so remember how at the end, towards the end of last episode, we kind of like yoked ourselves together? Mm-hmm. Uh, Bane passes the reins to some extent, like spiritually, uh, to Lydia. For at least herself. Hmm. I may need a hand with the weave depending on how things go, but for now, can I trust that you'll be able to take care of things here? I will do everything within my ability. Draka, are you going to let me go? He does not say anything. She is staring at Thane right now, not saying you words. Know you know what? Valid. <clears throat> That's valid. Yep. Although, I uh, want to vibe check that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're allowed to vibe check it if you'd like. I, I would like to, just... Just to say that I did. Go ahead. Just to say I could, I should have fucking it. Um, yeah, um, no, she's definitely holding to that. Like, she's racked with confliction at the moment. She does not know which way to turn, what to do, what to make of all this new information, of anything that's happening. She's just feeling right now, honestly. Still your turn. That, I'm not gonna take the action. You can do whatever you want. Hate the whole inside to take the action for your turn. That fucking sucks. I hate that. Can I? So at this point, is it a spiritual fight that's happening? Uh, it at least seems like it. I'm debating whether or not this can, can isolate this into the astral plane, actually. I don't know, can you? Uh, technically speaking, I can. Well, then it sounds like you probably can. Fuck, I'm gonna tell you no right now, what the fuck? Let's go, do the thing. Um, <laughs> for the big roll, <laughs> I appreciate it. And she will a big one. In a wisp of blue and black smoke disperse and appear in front of him. Reach out to at least touch him, grab his arm hand, something. And Fang can probably watch as the weave bends and after a moment they slip through Lydia and Amon are 
seemingly not necessarily directly removed from your gut, your all visibility, but there is sort of a an almost sheen of unreality in between all of you and the two of them. Lydia, you are immediately aware of an almost matrix-like pattern all around you in this space you find yourself in. It's not hard for you to recognize it as Iman's soul. You see all the intricate patterns and weavings of his life and experiences, the places it's been corrupted and torn and twisted, and you know that if you just sit here for long enough, twist and play with things wrong enough, you can tear this out of him. In the distance, in the corner, there is a figure huddled and holding his head. And that's Amon himself? Yep. My hair gives it away. Yeah. <laughs> she looks at this or expanding weave and the darkness that's taken hold of it and spies him and approaches. And I imagine as she gets closer, there's also the shapes of forms of his children and maybe even their voices as they're talking. And she kneels down in front of him and just quietly with that same pain and sadness that has become so integral in their communication recently. Says, Iman, can you look at me? I'm afraid to. Why? I don't want to think about what I've done. What I believed. What I chose to believe. You cannot hide or run from the past, from the decisions that you've made. But you can use them to do something better. You truly still think I can do anything better than all the wrong I've done? I think that's a choice that you need to make. A choice. Yes. And if you don't Emma. mind, sorry, go ahead, please, please go ahead. Iman, I can remove this thing from you. And give you another chance. That is more than I deserve, but I would give anything to be free of this pain. Please, my light, please. And let me extinguish this false flame so that you might be able to bear a new light. Takes one deep breath. I'm ready. And here's how this is going to play out. There are exactly, not counting Iman, who is not in action right now, and Tal, who is out of action, there are about 
One, two, three, four, five actions remaining on each round. Lydia, I need you to make an Arcana check. Not including your own, obviously, because your, your, your turn ends here. We're going to move on next and slide over to Morham next and then the rest. Morham is, however, going to hold his action for now. So we're actually going to slide back over to Airdre now. So I need you to go ahead and make that first Arcana check, Lydia, before anything else happens. If you manage to make all five when we swing around to your round, I'll let you know what happens. The more you fail these checks, and I'm let, I won't, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the DC right now. The DC is 18. The more of these you fail, the worse your result gets. Okay. <clears throat> so first roll will include plus two from Chet. Hit it. Third is an easy pass. Airdre, it's your turn. As you watch again, there's a sheen of not reality between you all and Lydia and Amon. And Morhem is in front of you. Talva's down. Rio's behind you. Uh, Fane and Draka are facing off right now. Go. I like the idea that as he like fell from being poisoned, he actually fell to like one knee, and a hand like instinctively went to his sword. And so like the first bit of consciousness is like the resonance his sword has with him, like projecting an emotion. Mm -hmm. I don't know that it's even panic as much as like determination. Mm -hmm. He stands up and just out of the corner of the eye sees that thing. And he's looking right at this guy. Uh, I always forget his name. Morhem. Uh, Morhem. And uh, I think he's... And he says one word in Elvish. I think it's the word prey, like something that you hunt. Mm -hmm. uh, as He marks him with Hunter's Mark, and he's actually going to draw his sword now. All right. Do the thing. And it uh, rings out the first attack. You see him... Uh, his eyes widen in fear as you draw your sword. That is a hit for 14 damage. Uh, plus eight more. Minus eight more. He is not looking good at all. And uh, second verse, same as the first. Oof, mm. that's not going to hit, unfortunately. Well, I'm going to spend a 1d6 not and then, another, then my last key point to increase that by another two. That is 14 which is uh, just shy. Damn. There's a floating uh, plus two in chat you could use. Yeah, can, I, can I use that floating plus two? I'm like, I really want to hit this guy. Do we not want to leave that for Lydia? <laughs> yeah, uh, that's fair. Do you know how damn. many plus twos I've got in chat right now? Like <laughs> A good number. <laughs> I, I right. don't. No, I have no idea. <laughs> I can't keep I track of it. Looking at chat. She's got a whole lot. All right, the number is too high. It hits. So is that, does that do that eight plus five damage? Uh, yeah. That uh, is, what's that grand total? 13? Mm hmm He looks horrendous on the edge of it. It just, you should have hit me when you had the chance. He steps back and is, begins to mumble prayers to himself. Mm -hmm. Upon the high mountain did the great flame come first. <laughs> and just begins to step back as he's very concerned about what's happening. Anything else for you? No, I think that just, like, the blade is singing these notes almost to the tune of his prayer mm. and is definitely kind of mocking him as much as... This is why Airdre doesn't draw it. It's not a nice weapon. Well, minus your sword being a dick, we move on to Fane as I need another Arcana check from our house historian. Uh, hey, really quick. Uh, oh. Actually, Airdre does another D6. Because Hunter's Mark is per weapon attack. You're right. No, that was that was part of the second one. If you uh, looked, the five. Yeah, the five. Uh, uh -huh. Aha, yeah, I have spell. all the modifiers down. I can press buttons. Mm -hmm. I just keep forgetting to do it for a dreadful strike. Mm -hmm. All right, then, Vane, do the thing. Um. In a in a uh, twist of. Uh, what happened between uh, Airdre and Morin. Um, Fane's going to turn back to Draka, take both of her hands, and say, Pray. Yeah, she fails that one. She looks really conflicted. Just for what? For 
for the world to turn over, for the flame to go out, for a brighter future for you and me and everyone that we care about and will care about. She closes her eyes slowly, which, Fane, you'd know for someone who spends their life fighting, that's not a thing a warrior would usually do to someone they're fighting. Fane presses her forehead against Draka's, gives another kiss, and also prays with all of her might. Yeah. Anything else for you? It's you, you say the turn. Uh, I mean, can I can I pray so hard that, that Draka doesn't act? Uh, basically, so that Draka doesn't act, but also, I guess my other thing is that I want to help. I want us praying to help Lydia. Fuck yeah. So, advantage of it. Draka is going to skip her turn. So you're going to roll two now. One for Draka, one for Lydia. Roll both in advantage. For our fucking Fane. No, for one for Draka, one for Rio, actually. I don't know where the fuck that came from. Everyone's Lydia now. I don't know. Whatever the case. <laughs> you're rolling two checks. Just Lydia. Just Lydia. <laughs> you're rolling two checks. We're in the Lydia verse now. You're rolling two checks. They're both an advantage. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. So then I'll just do. How do you get the joke in? To make it simpler. Okay. So 20 is the advantage for that one. Mm hmm. That's, yeah. That's, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's good. And that's, that's a 30. Much more than 20. Yeah. With a, yeah, okay, so both of those stick. Lydia, from within, as you are concentrating on weaving around the literal fabric of Amon's soul, you feel two new presences enter this planar scape without even having to look back at them. You can tell from their soul resonance. It's Fane and Draka. Just standing there, offering you their thoughts, their hope that this works. Rio, it's your turn, bud. Alrighty. Um, Rio will turn to uh, this bald this bald bitch here uh, and will kind of just say, P please save your breath. And he will throw his, uh, his, da his this special dagger um, at That's his cool. chest. Attack roll. That is an 18. That's a hit. Yeah. Uh, and that, I might attack some. If that is a, uh, it is a, uh, just a 14. Base 14. He rolled uh, an 18. Okay. Uh, Still going to do your damage and sneak attack, so that might yep. be enough. Yeah. Go ahead and roll damage plus yeah. attack. So, for, for base damage, I thought he was just going to die from that. Um, yeah. might die this. Hmm. Uh, let's see. That's one. Actually, hold up, Rio. I'm sorry. Five. Do me a favor. Up? Don't roll damage. Can I yep. take over here for a little bit? Go ahead. I trust Lydia. You. Can you give me one last Arcana check, real quick? As I'll tell you all what happens. With one last success. 31. Rio, your knife buries itself in Morahem. He starts to stumble backwards, blood leaving his mouth. He is clearly on his way to death's door. You see him raise I... up. Uh, Airdre? Uh, no, sorry. Uh, no, 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 please, I please. have a thing I could do. If he's obviously dying, I think Airdre would sheath his sword and a hand on his shoulder. And if you'll allow me, uh, Erdrick can Misty Step, where he basically passes through the ethereal plane for a second. Can I use that to just bring him into the space to see what's happening on the other uh, side? If you wouldn't mind waiting to see this happen, I feel like it's a, it's sure. a slightly, slightly more yeah, yeah. important. Um, okay. He steps back. Yeah, sorry, no, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. I got you, my fault. He steps back. Clearly still on death's door, on his way mm -hmm. out. He brings up both hands, clenches them tight, and you see magical fire well up in them again. He points over, he looks over at this area over here, like he's about to throw one more spell at it. 
He raises up and throws both hands down. There's a moment where all of you would be maybe just not fast enough to react in the surprise of the moment. Mm. But then there's that quick rush of wind just past all of you. Most interestingly, right past Fane. As you quickly jab your eyes open, weirdly enough, still in the astral plane, but also here present in this space, Draka, who is still meeting your forehead, has taken a single step forward and is now basically nose to nose with you. Her arm, which had the spear in it, is now forward. The spear is not in it anymore. As it's embedded in Moraham's chest. He looks up at her, falls over, dead, the spear tipping onto the ground and having him literally slide through it. And Draka just says, with her eyes still closed and her lips a half inch from Thane's, just, no more. Please, no more. We take ourselves back inside the astral plane. As more and more hearts and minds add themselves. Don't yeah, worry, can I, I bring them Rio? I got you. I got you. I got you. No, I, I got you. I got you. Hold tight. Hold tight. I got you. I got you. Hold tight. Hold tight. I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. Yeah. You're in that moment. As you can feel more and more flames light themselves in the distance, gather themselves here in this place. Airdre, then Rio, and even as parting souls go towards the afterlife, Talv and Morhem also join the chorus of people who are all behind you, Lydia, as you work and weave at these things. You open your eyes to get a better view as you play and prod at the soul. Iman finally comes up out of that crouched stance. Stands tall and proud. Tell me, Lydia, is he taller than you? Yes. Although Lydia stands tall and wears heels, she is actually a very short woman. <laughs> he stands just a little bit over you, not much. Looking down at you, you've seen many emotions in his face throughout the years. Pain, rage, sorrow. You've also seen joy and love, jealousy. It's just pride right now. Just pride. And as all of you who are outside of this image, I think... Rio and Fane, who are most attuned to this the most, would be aware of it. You can see past the refraction, past this breach into the astral plane, a large slithering figure slide its way up to this area, stop, look at this astral bubble she clearly cannot enter, and just, no! As within this, Lydia, you are moving pieces into place, like shifting parts of a lock you want to pick. Almost. And you have just about everything in place. And you are ready to pull and render this up out of Iman. You have done things perfectly. You know for a fact this will save his life. You also know it will have consequences when you do so. What do you say? As her hands are up, prepared to pluck that last cord needed to sever this completely. She looks at him and says, Oh, 
There aren't many things that I can do to apologize for what happened. I don't think this will even make up for it. But do yourself and your children the right and the justice that you deserve to treat the people around you and the people of this world with the actual light that you wanted to show them. The gods might be dead and dying, but not everyone needs to know that. I can't even promise you what will happen once you return. I don't know what course of action the others will take. I can just give you this chance. You are right. This does not absolve you of any guilt for what happened. As there is no guilt to absolve in you. You are also right. No, you are kind to offer me another chance. Two other figures manifest, this time behind Iman. Alma and Kao. The spear all around you, Lydia, corruption and all collapses into one solid sphere directly in front of you. You could reach in and pull out that corruption at any time, but Amon's soul is still surrounding it right now. He holds his hand forward. As he clenches it, his axe manifests. But I have been given enough chances. So instead, can I offer you one? What is it? You are a kind woman to consider retribution for one like me. Retribution is not a thing I deserve. Not when there are so many bodies behind me. But life finds a place for all things. The righteous and the impure. The fervent and the non-believer. The guilty. He looks back at his two children. And the innocent. Mayhap, rather than giving me another chance, we can give them one more. Bury me with this thing. Kill this fetid curse in me. But let the life force in me replenish these two. Let us both make up for what may have been unfortunate mistakes. You're certain. I have never been more certain of anything in my entire life. Anything. And let those who are listening know this. 
And that's a bit of a ripple to at least those of us in the nearby vicinity. Mm -hmm. They were tuned into this astral plane, so Draka, Fane, Eredre, Rio, at the very minimum, can all hear. The flame of the Everlight Church is being put to an end. The dying flame will be extinguished. And from it will come a new light. One of purity. One that will, hopefully, see a brighter future. A brighter dawn. He smiles, raises his ex high at a two handed grip. Thank you. Of course. And you all watch as with the flaming lit blow, Iman's two handed axe, sacrament comes down and shatters the globe of his soul. The blackness re-enters into that astral projection of his body. The glittering fragments of light that were his soul paints and color the two spectral figures of the children behind him, giving them life and flesh all over again, looking just as good as the day you'd left them. As Amon holds in this darkness within him, his body withers, fades, and floats off. You don't see it, Lydia, because it's not on you. But somewhere on a hill, around the neck of one Naori Verdans, a cold blue gem in a necklace turns a bright red, now no longer needing human souls to be maintained but rather a phylactery fueled on one man's love. <laughs> I turned it back just a second. Okay. Um, Damn. So here's what I'm going to say to do because it's 1 30 in the fucking morning and i'm sorry about that i know i promised y'all a, a conclusory scene let's do the following things let's cut here let's mm -hmm. come back in two weeks have a real quick wrap-up session just a sort of epilogue see where y'all leave the gilded coasts maybe give me a sequel session mm. i'm seeing a finger i'm down for more i'm down for more rio i don't know how the others feel i'm I think Meg and I have a thing. <laughs> That's true. We'll I'm double checking dates. Give me a second. We'll schedule it. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We'll come back. The point we'll is, come back to it. we're going to cut ourselves on that scene there as you all lick your wounds mm -hmm. and recover from a victorious battle, which we'll talk about. Don't get me wrong. We are going to come mm -hmm. back here. I promise. Okay. However, I want to go on and get us out of here for the night, all right? So okay. I guess I want to go ahead and thank you all for coming to part one of the Against the Light finale? Um, it was not planned. But, yeah, um, but well, hey, what did I expect with um, these fucking incredible role players out here? Uh, let's get this real quick and easy out of the way. I'm gonna go around the horn, say who you are, who you've been, where you can be found on the internet, plug some shit, and let's get the fuck out of here. Herman, you go first. Um, fuck, oh shit. Hey, I'm Legendary Vermin. You can find me as Legendary Vermin on all the places on the internet that matter. That is, of course, itch, twitch, Twitter, and I suppose YouTube. Uh, if you're ever curious what I am doing in terms of streaming, you can go to legendaryvermin.com slash live. Uh, next week, um, on the 28th, uh, come right back here for the second episode of Frozen Rain with two of the uh, lovely people. Foxy and Meg are both going to be in that show. Uh, then followed up on Monday over on TPK for the 10th the second to last episode I don't know if it's the 10th episode of Madness Calls It Forth um, noir mm. 
fairy tales in a creepy city. Um, and uh, check out my games. Uh, yeah, fuck. I've been Fane. Peace. <laughs> Wait, so we gotta run around. Tate, do the thing. Hi. Hello, Twitch. My name is Tate Washburn. You can find me at kinda underscore writing on Twitter if you want to watch me mostly do memes and some politics and tabletop design stuff. I actually have a uh, itch now that has nothing on it that I'm going to put down here, but it's going to have stuff on it uh, soon. And then also, uh, what you should really do is actually follow the Twitter account for this channel, uh, Neon Lights Are Play, where we actually announce all the cool stuff we're going to do. Uh, you'll see me next uh, running the Violet Sea next Saturday. It's the finale. I believe it will be the finale, but considering how this happened, who knows? You never know. Uh, you never know. But uh, I'll be honest, it's going to be pretty heavy. It's going to be pretty... Oof, and uh, it's going to be really good. So you should definitely do that. Uh, what, Foxy's going to be in it. It's going to be very good, along with uh, several other people that you know and love in this channel. Uh, and then I guess I'll be here. And then there's some other games I'm going to be in coming up, but you'll have to hear about those later. Bring oh, you should also join our Discord. Bring it on around. Let's do Meg next. Hello everybody, I am Meg Mysteria. I got to play Lydia Evermore, who you guys threw so much support at in the chat today. Thank you, I appreciate it. We all appreciate it, but um, as far as where you can find me next, you'll see me here on the 28th. 28th? Yeah, 28th. Yeah. Six for... days, y'all! Six, Six days! Six days! For, um, like they mentioned earlier, like Vermin mentioned earlier, four. Frozen Rain, where I finally get to show up. <laughs> yes. Can't It'll wait to really hate you. It's so great. But uh, after that, uh, I think the next thing that you'll see me in might be Hubris of Man. Uh, that will be on June 8th. If that's if we don't have uh, our follow-up episode in a couple of weeks, that'll be the next time you see me over on TPK, and I get to torment vermin through part one of the finale <laughs> Damn. i say it every time we have you on here i'm gonna say it again please y'all don't sleep on hubris it's such a great fucking show like it's such a good fucking show y'all we need have to everything uh being mean to robots just shooting robots with a harpoon gun <laughs> tearing their arms off twice in a season w what Sometimes more could you ask for aliens. you could ask for anything more honestly uh, i guess that last thing that's off. Gay. I mean, Vermin's in it, so like it's like gay by default. Yes. Y you know what? Fair enough. Yes. Oh, so Chaps, do the thing. Oh, it's oh, it's my turn. Fuck, it's your turn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello, I love you. I've been Ch I am Chaps. I've been playing our adorable little crime gremlin, Rio Branshaw. Or is he? Sorry. Oh, um, <laughs> I mean, his real name has yet to be revealed, so there is that. There's still one more session. Yeah, um, but I don't know. Um, yeah, you can find me on a lot of social medias on uh, by its Chaos variations of its because people are just like that. Um, and yeah, just look for the the, the dolphin makes it easier. Um, yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm. Oh, I'm so. I don't have as polished up of a thing as Vermin does, because I just wing wing shit. So um, you'll get it. You get a pattern eventually. Eventually, eventually, I'll have a fucking script that I can fucking memorize. You'll figure it out, um, baby. Just but today is not that day. Just keep <laughs> adlibbing it. Until, until not it's this six. day. That's not happened for me. <laughs> or that. I'm actually pulling out a fucking. There it is. Script. There it is. Anything else, friend, or is that it for you? That's pretty much it. You can find me here mainly on Neon Lights Roleplay. Um, hopefully I'll be able to do more personal streams soon, but I'm not sure. We'll see. In we'll either see. case, that leaves it back with me, friends. If you don't know who I am by now, I'm Young Foxy, aka Big Foxy, also known as your favorite Fox Phillies finest. Uh, you can find me on Twitter sphere at Foxy Eternal. That's F O double X double I E T E R N A L. I can spell words. Uh, the next place you'll see me at is actually. Uh... Yeah, no, y'all won't see me for a little bit, actually, till, as mentioned, Friday, the 28th, for the Frozen Rain. Uh, as we return again, I bring Reiji back. You'll see me directly after that for the Violet Sea finale on Saturday. 
Uh, you'll see me again on Sunday for All Black Everything. Uh, you'll see me again back here in a little bit longer, and uh, I'm I'm just around on the internet. Uh, otherwise, I'll be doing things in places. Uh, more things will be announced soon that I'm in. Otherwise, we've been awesome. Y'all have been amazing. We've been Neon Lights Roleplay. This has been Against the Light, and you all have been an incredible audience. Please take care of yourselves and everybody else around you for the duration of the time you have on this earth. And remember, the most powerful thing you can go to war with is your own feelings. Please keep that close as you go out of here. We have no raid target. Good night, loves. Take us out, Michelle. Bye. 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 Bye.